now. We are at the control. <laughs> but the next leg, I think, is sort of uh, root choice also. Still, we saw the best ones went to the right. But so on the first leg of a relay like this, it's um, it's easy to take the safe options. If you see that there is a root choice using a lot of uh, parts and tracks that look quite good, then maybe you take it because it's, it's easier and uh, it gives you a good feeling. Yeah, I mean, you have to be awake for the four kings, but still, when you see two root choices and the second option is also good, everyone is going there, you better stay in the group. So. Oh, there is one going back. No. <laughs> in red, and uh, yes, she has to go back, actually. Looks like she has skipped the control before this uh, TV point. Ah, there are two runners now going back. That doesn't feel too good <laughs> when you are going back and meeting everyone. <laughs> So more than 1,000 teams now, it's punched here, and uh, they are already more than 10 minutes behind uh, the best ones. So we have watched the first uh, TV split. We have seen a little bit of um, of tracking as well, and uh, we are waiting now for the next TV control. Maybe already in uh, four or five minutes because uh, they are running a little bit faster than than we expected. And most of the favorite teams um, they were actually there. Um, Nidal and had lost time, almost three minutes. And, yeah, and uh, Kalavarasti also lost time. And I, also I, Kalavarasti. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. So they are the two, maybe of the favorite teams that are a little bit behind. We will see Elise Exet for Nidalen is a very strong runner. Maybe she can catch up or maybe it will uh, lead to more mistakes, which can also happen when you are stressed and you know that you have made a uh, probably quite silly mistake mm. in, the, in the beginning of the, um, of the course. But we see, if we look at the athletes that are in front here, Ödum, we have Caroline Olsson, Julia Gross, Inger Myre, Hilda Forsgren, Maria Magnusson, Heidi Mortensson, there is a lot of strong runners mm. who has uh, gone to the front here. So it will be interesting to see if that changes when you get into the little bit more technical part now to see if the, the better technical athletes will also manage to catch up. Maybe they are 20, 30 seconds behind on the running and then yeah, when it becomes yeah. more technical. They can catch up to leading, uh, leading teams. But still, I think uh, when I saw them standing on the start line, it's a very high level now on mm. the first leg. And, and I mean, they're very good orienteers. I think it will be not, not a big group doing mistake. Perhaps one is dropping, but uh, I think they are good enough to, to really manage, stay focused and do the job on the first leg. I mean, you have mm. a duty on the first leg and a uh, responsibility to perform just a g on a good level. Just keep the... Keep your team in the relay. Yes. Keep your team uh, in a position where they can still, still fight. It's uh, you can never win a relay on the first leg, but you can lose it. And here we have those two coming back, the yellow and uh, the red one. So it was about uh, two and a half, three minutes. They had to go back to a control before and then come back here. There will probably be bigger mistakes during the relay than this, but... Uh, yeah, this is still for safe area. <laughs> I think they will come more interesting. Ah, OK Helen is also a team that has uh, lost some time. Teresa Vengdal is running on the first leg. And um, I see also Kalman Rasti has lost some time. I don't think we have tracking on Nidalen, so I don't think they are. Um, I don't think they are on this uh, this picture on the first leg. But Uko Helen has lost some time. I don't think the Uko Helen team is strong enough uh, overall to fight for the fight for the win. But Kalman Rasti has. Uh, 
an international team. Ayas Krastina, Latvia, Paula Isomarko, Finland, and Amelie Chatang of France, and Sarah Richter, Switzerland. So they have four different nationalities in their team, and it's a um, it's a quite good team, but Ayas Krasina has lost some time. She lost a little bit of time also in the first leg of um, of Tio Mila, I think, but they ended up in fifth place. So, yeah, I mean, still you see in the women's race can happen a lot. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see. So still a couple of minutes to the next uh, TV control. If they continue to run faster than um, the course setter's expectation, they should be there uh, in just uh, two minutes. People uh, are enjoying themselves. We see still a little bit windy, but um, very nice temperature outside. And uh, quite warm, quite hot, but um, there has been Venla Yukura relays warmer than this too. So it's not too bad, but it's important to drink uh, enough water before uh, running also for the men who is going out in the night and uh, are staying out in the sun most of the day that they uh, get enough liquid in norway and sweden there is we have not seen the sun since last year so uh, can be quite a shock uh, for those coming across across the sea here So we're out in the forest again, a small boulder after five kilometers on the women's course means that it's three kilometers to uh, the finish and uh, expected running time here is 31 minutes and they were one and a half minute ahead at uh, former control so um, they are not uh, taking much more. Maybe it was just a running in the beginning that was a little bit faster than the corsetters as is expected. And now when they get into the forest, they are running approximately at the same same speed. They have to be there in uh, yeah, 50 seconds time if they are keeping still one and a half minute ahead of the schedule. It's quite open terrain in this part with uh, small hills and uh, very nice forest. We are waiting. Who will be first? Panorus was leading at uh, first TV control. We will have two TV controls quite close now. We have this after five kilometers and we will have another one just 700 meters later. So we will uh, just see the first teams here and then quite quickly move on to uh, the next one. But now they are losing a little bit of time compared to the course setter since they were one minute 40 ahead and now it's just one minute 20 and still no one yeah that's perhaps the when the women go to the forest they need some more strength so now they're losing a little bit compared to the beginning where there was very fast running and uh, might be some smaller mistakes also we we see we can see only the same tracking that you can see so um, we only have the same information, we don't have any more information. Mm -hmm. 
Right, it will be interesting to see now who has the initiative, who is leading the group here, because um, it is normally like that. It is one or two athletes who who are the the bosses in the group and uh, are taking the responsibility. And here is uh, here is the first one alone. This yeah. is quite good. Sari Antonen for Kevin Kisa Iliat. That was probably not so well, but okay. She's a strong. She was in the World Cup recently for Finland. And here comes the rest from another direction. Here, Annika Rikma for Hidden Kierteet is uh, there. Angin Emenankur, MS Parma, Sevedalen, Okokore, Tisaren is here. Very good from um, Lilian Forsgren. But it's. Uh, I might want some Fredrik's It's a completely different group now. These are the athletes that were uh, 30, 40 seconds behind at the first uh, TV control. Except from Tisaren, who's managed to stay up there. But no Jala, no Panorus. Yeah, but I think uh, the four kings have done their job now. So that's very good. So we'll see what's happening. And it's very stretched out. Roslagen is there. Linné, second team. Here comes another group. Very high number. He's here as the second team. Is there also Pargas, uh, Fossum, Sigrid Alexandersen, Beckelager first team. And here comes the two Yala teams, first and second team. One minute, ten seconds behind now. And Pan uh, second team. And also Tampere Pyrinte is here now. Leading is here now. A lot of the favorite teams. Dom Narve, Dana Broshkova, one minute twenty. And Halden, Holyor. 1.30 behind. About 30 teams. Suratuna. Is, no, it's not Suratuna. Sorry, it's... Uh, it was Lynx. And uh, Poyan Tete is here. If Göteborg is here. Two minutes now. Here is Panorus, Miritran Ödum, who was leading the last time. Now she's two minutes behind the leading group. Kove, Lisa Antila, is uh, here as well, two minutes behind. Ukoline has also been here. She was uh, about one minute behind. So we are missing Kalvan Rasti still, and uh, we are missing Nydalen. The Norwegian teams, MLM and uh, Frol. Close to two and a half minutes behind. Stora Tuna was about one minute, ten seconds behind uh, Julia Gross. She was together with Jala. So they are uh, also still up there. Okoliné. 56th position now. Hilda Forsgren has lost some time. More than three minutes uh, behind. Ah. As I said, we will soon go to the next TV also after 5.7 kilometers. We'll see if we can have Karlovan Rasti, see if we can have um, Nidalen pass this uh, point. Or if they have lost even more. Seventy teams within the first uh, four minutes, and here was uh, Kalvan Rasti. I ask Rasti now was there now four minutes ten seconds uh, behind. So it's a difficult start for uh, Kalvan Rasti because there are a lot of favorite teams that are very close to to the leaders and. Um,
Uh, if you stay within the first two minutes, uh, that's pretty much okay on the first leg. We are out on uh, just some hundred meters later, 700 meters later on the third. TV control. We'll see if something can happen just on this short short time. There are probably some forkings uh, in between here. Might uh, change things. Nydalen, Elise Eggset now 5 minutes 15. 5 minutes 15 behind on uh, the second TV control. So it's a difficult start for um, for Nidala. And another change. Now in uh, the lead. Heine Sarimeki. He's taken over the lead now and Sari Antonen just behind. Again from another direction. Probably some other um, some other forkings there. Okoliné, but that's the second team of Okoliné. Inga Kaslauskait to the Lithuanian national team runner. MS Parma, Anastasia Rudnaya. She has been up there on all radio controls, all TV controls from the beginning too. And uh, and Uko Tisaren. And Simone is happy. <laughs> yes, that's a good start. It's a very good start yeah. for uh, Tisaren. Yeah. And... Um, I mean, MS Parma, I think they're also quite a strong team overall, so we will see what's happening in the, in yes, the Finnish Maya, forest. Yeah. Maya Sianoja, yes. Tia Mietinen and Tulia Viberg yeah. is uh, the team, team of MS, MS Parma. They got a good start. Because the gaps are, they are growing a little bit bigger from, um, for each time. So we are Yvonne Gunnell, Pargas. Experience. Yes, a lot of experience. Pargas. One minute behind. It looks like Lexam. Elin uh, Elstedt Tysk. This is a very good start for Lexam. Because they have a strong team after this with um, Linnea Gustafsson, Helena Jansson, and Rahel Friedrich. And Dom Narve. Dana Broshkova, she is uh, the same distance, one and a half minute, but she's taking places now, all the time. And Jala is here, and Tamperen Pyrinto is here. And this is um, this is the main pack of this uh, first leg, the main favorite pack. They are coming here. It's Antila. Beckelage is uh, here. Beckelage first team and second team. Jotteborg Majorna is also here. But they are without Judith Wider, so um, probably not strong enough to win overall. And Halden also the last team to stay in this uh, stay in this group. Ah. And just a little bit behind this group now is Poyantetti. Ten seconds up. That's really the group you want to be in. Yeah, I think here you have to stay. <laughs> So, but she's only 10 seconds, she can surely see them, so um, maybe she can get in touch with them again. Lillomarka from Norway, 2.26. Behind Charlotte Watson, uh, British runner on the first leg there. But already quite split, I think that's a little bit surprising for me, that's so big gaps already. Okay, 29th. Oh. Here comes another group from another direction. 30 teams has punched here. Hakas Poikana is there. And then we, that's the second team leading her, is there. Three minutes behind for leading her with Sarina Jenser. Did a very good middle distance recently in Sweden. She was sixth there and. Uh, this is the second team of Palm Orus. has lost some time. The first team of Pan Orhus has uh, still not punched here. Fredrik has lost some time just on this short, uh, short legs from the former TV control until this one. So 
surely some mistakes in this part. Here comes Sayas Krastina, I think, for Kalavan Rasti. She is uh, still four minutes behind, but she is taking a lot of places on this part. And also Linné, who is losing, has lost another minute. She was three minutes behind, now she's more than four minutes behind. Yeah, only small gap here, you can lose a lot now. And uh, it's also the Danish team. I think we have still not had first team of Panorus. No, she was two minutes behind at five kilometers and not yet here. We had the second team, but I don't think we had the first team yet. Uh, we will see if they. Uh, we will see if they arrive. It's gone almost five minutes now. Yes, a very interesting first leg. Yeah, it started very close together on the first uh, TV control, but then uh, things is really happening now. They start to um, drop off some of the teams and uh, only on the short 700 meters from the second to the third TV control we saw, we saw changes. But uh, there is a quite big group of about 20 runners there and uh, many of the favorite teams are, are, are there, of course. Yeah, I think we have we have some, but we have surprisingly also some teams not there, and uh, we will see. Is it three, four? Yeah, also five minutes behind. Is it too much already? And you see this this terrain. It's it can be tougher also than what we saw on the beach uh, in the beginning. Exactly. I think it's about the changes, and I mean Heini Sarimek, because she knows exactly what it's all about here. <laughs> She's strong here. And uh, Kaslauskaite is also. Uh, Doing well. This is uh, Angel Menankuri in the lead. Tisar and, and uh, Ms. Parma. And it's a longer, longer leg. And uh, the next TV control will be after 7.1 kilometers. So it's just about wow, one uh, kilometer and a couple of minutes. And they will be there. And that means we are quite close to the changeover because the, the final part in here is also quite fast. Yeah, beside to the last control, it's a, a fight, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think the last part is about running again. So um, let's see at the computer if we still not... Yeah, Panorus has been there, six minutes behind, six minutes behind now for uh, Militran Ödum. So, um, so she has lost a lot of time, four minutes just on those 700 meters. So it is possible to make quite big mistake here also for the, for the good. Uh, the good athletes. Ah, it's not uh, so um, positive for the Danish team. They will struggle to come back and take a third consecutive victory now after this. So the changeover is um, expected after 50 minutes. So it's um, just some seven, eight minutes to the changeover. And then two shorter legs, the second and uh, the third. We are out in the forest again. 7.1 kilometer. The course setter has expected uh, 45.50. 45.50 until this point. So they still have about one minute to go. But they are quite close now to the, what the course setter uh, has expected. But we have seen that there has been quite a lot of changing in the lead, so uh, it's possible maybe to run even faster if you have a perfect race. Yeah, Angel Emen Ankuri. She knows this terrain, you said. Yeah, I mean, Haney is a very stable and good runner, especially on the first leg, and then they have young runner on the second leg, and uh, also some Canadian Yeah, Emily girl. Kemp will run the last yeah, leg for exactly. uh, Angela Melancourie. And also on the third leg, I mean, she was in World Cup, so... Mm -hmm. 
and so close to their home home area. I think they prepared very carefully on to this Venla relay. So we see Lilian coming. Yes, this is Lilian Forsgren. This is Oko Tisaren from Sweden now in the lead, all alone. Ah. Is uh, all the time a new leader, but they are not far behind. Angel Yemen are just nine seconds uh, behind, and uh, MS Parma. are also there. Kaurun Kisailiat. Sari Antonen. Here comes uh, Kaslauskait, I think, in their second team. So it's good for their second team, but not so good for the first team, because they are more than four minutes behind on the last, last TV. She's already one minute behind, so that's quite she, a big gap yes, already. Yes, she's losing uh, also time from the last one. And here comes this big group. They were from one minute five, one minute ten, until one and a half minute behind the last time. So they are losing. They are running very well there in front. Um, Sarimeki and um, Forsgren. It's Fossum of Norway leading this group now. Sigrid Alexanders and a junior runner selected for the Norwegian junior team. He's up in sixth place. Uh, Jala's second team is there. Alfta Ösa, Galina Vinogradova. They have a quite good team, Alfta Ösa. It'll be interesting to follow them. Uh, Yvonne Gunnell, she's caught up now by this big group. Dana Broshkova doing exactly what Omnarve wants her to do. Just stay in this leading group on the first... Um, on the main group, we should say, on the first leg. And Bekelag is there. Lexan is there as well. And uh, Lilian Forsgren approaching uh, the changeover. Head of Sari Meki, and uh, we will soon have the first changeover of this uh, Venla relay. 50 minutes is the expected from uh, the course setter. It will be just maybe a few seconds uh, faster, but very close to the estimate. Yala has now uh, also punched. They are 216 behind, so this quite big group out on the former TV control has split up a little bit. Ah, Oko Tisaren, one of the outsiders, I would call them, in this uh, Venla relay. They have Simone Nigli on the last leg, and uh, they get a perfect start here by uh, Lilian Forsgren, winning this uh, first leg for Oko Tisaren. She was eighth in the World Cup recently for Sweden. Very strong, very stable uh, orienteer. Yeah, I mean, they really did the tactics, that strong beginning, and Simone told me yesterday, I mean, they always lost in the beginning, and then they had to catch up, so they changed their tactics now, and uh, until now, it's a good... Well, they can't complain so far. No, I think it's uh, <laughs> it's going like they, they wish. We will see what the runners on second and third leg. So Luisa Passion Can is going out on the second leg, and... Uh, so the question is now, how does she handle to go out in the lead? Uh, does she manage to take it easy and just uh, think that, okay, I have a couple of minutes to the main group, I can just take it easy, orienteer, and then if they catch me, it's okay? Yeah. Or if uh, I mean, it's the again, stress she, is coming? She has a job to do, and uh, if she can, she can only focus on this. She, has to, she doesn't have to be the first one in the changeover, but she has to get, make a good job. The same for Angel Niemi. They have a young runner there, so it's, it's exciting for her to go so early into the forest, I think. Ah, Luisa Passion heading out on uh, the second leg. Also, Angel Yemin has changed over. Ms. Parma. Yeah, Maya Sianoya, she's still young, but an experienced runner. I think she will she will be the boss there. And uh, Celia Kartinen for um, Angel Yemin. Sonja Mörski is out for Kaurun Isailiat. 
And Maya Sianoya, as you mentioned, for MS Parma. Still only four teams who have changed over one minute. Has uh, gone. And now this big group uh, is coming, but it's more and more stretched out towards the end of this uh, course. They have a bit of a gap. Fossum is uh, Nukolinne. Alta Ösa, Galina Vinogradova strong in uh, the finish here. Look at this uh, Alta Ösa team. Sara Eskilsson, Josefine Engström, the Swedish World Cup runner, and Natalia Vinogradova on the last leg. They are also one of the outsiders. They got a good start. Yeah, the start I think is perfect, but uh, yeah, have to see. And Dom Narve is here. Fossum is here, and the second team of Linné and Jala. That was the second team of Jala. Binger Myre staying ahead of the first team. Lexan only two minutes behind. It's a good first leg by uh, Elin Dahlstedt, Tysk. Uh, perfect start for, um, for Lexan. At least a very, very good start, just staying in the leading group. And Jala was also there with their first team, Karolina Olsson to Elsa Jansson. Bekelage was there, Nicolina Ekeberg-Sherve. Bekelage with Tone Wigemir on the last leg. Quite stable team also for Bekelage. And Karolina Høyskår is out for, um, for Dom Narven. She knows what this is all about. So the last part is tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was wondering about Stora Tuna, they were quite much behind. Yes, and Halden now, Halden, and Poyan yeah. Tetti are three minutes behind. Eva Jurenikova is waiting, uh, Anna Hataya is uh, waiting. We saw Lexan about two minutes behind. Tampren Pirinto ended up uh, three minutes 20 behind, so uh, she lost some time towards the end here. Uh, Lotta Carola for, for Tampren. TP. And uh, Ala is here, Hemelin and Sunnistayat is here. 30 teams in the first uh, four minutes. Fredrik Sta arrives here, so the Telly also. Thirty-six teams. Pamoru's second team was faster than the faster than the first team. If you the boy changes over. Now about four and a half minutes behind, also Antenui, the second team is better than the first team. This is a problem for the team selectors in a lot of the teams where the first team is ahead of the... No, the second team is ahead of the first team here on the first leg. No, but I mean, it's always you have to decide and uh, the first team is under pressure. Yes. And, uh, it's easy to be in the second team, the best one. Okay, so uh, a short summary of this, um, of this first leg, which was... Um, which was very interesting with uh, T. Saren, the one of the favorite teams or the outsider teams, those teams. We have a list here about 16 teams that we would follow a little bit extra. And um, T. Saren was the only one in this first four that uh, we have on our list that also have a quite good team through. But it will be very interesting now for T. Saren on the second and third leg to see how how they can perform there. And uh, Yala is doing their job. Uh, Dom Narve is doing their job. Uh, Lexan is still in there. Halden, Poyanteti, okay. And then some teams have lost some time. Uh, Panorus now, five and a half minutes behind. Stora Tuna, Julia Gross coming now. Mm. Five and a half minutes yeah. behind. Um, I think they wanted her to be 
yeah, a little bit better than that. Yes, and she can yes. obviously be a little bit better yes. than that. She has the capacity to change over first here. Mm. So, um, and also, uh, uh, let's see, Kovel is until uh, four minutes behind. Kalevan Rasti, five minutes behind. So it, the, the list is getting longer with the favorite teams that have actually lost some time here on the first leg. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, this is Frol changing over. And uh, we have still not had Nidal on first team. Now we have Nidal on first team, yes. And still not Ukoline. But they are coming now. Lina Kuselu is uh, waiting. There are six minutes. Six minutes behind Ukoline and uh, Nidal. Six minutes. That's probably too much. But we will see. It's still a long way to go. I mean, it's a last, uh, long leg, and we have on the last leg not so much longer, but you see what happened here, so I think on the last leg can also happen a lot. <laughs> and Tenui, seven minutes behind. And on the second leg, um, we will have the same TV control. We will be at the beach quite shortly, because they had nine and a half minutes there on the first leg, and... Um, Normally, it's a little bit faster in the beginning on the first leg. The speed is higher, but uh, it will just be a couple of minutes until we have them have them at that point. Ah, Tullinge, seven and a half minutes behind here. So one of the lower numbers. And we soon have 100 teams within the first eight minutes. Yes, so here we have uh, from the first leg Lilian Forsgren, the first to change over. Fantastic start for Tisad and, and for you. Yes, really, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm so happy. It was a great race and uh, I didn't know I was first. I, we split up quite early and it was hard to see everyone in the green areas. So I'm just thrilled to be first. And uh, how was it? Uh, the terrain was changing. We saw it was very fast in the beginning, and then suddenly all the mistakes seems to come for a lot of the top teams. Yeah, on the long legs it was uh, a lot of road choices where you just had to run really fast, and uh, in the end it was more tricky. I, I think a lot of people made mistakes, and then maybe you get tired, and it's it's hard to have focus and, and get all the details right. So it was really tricky in the end. So you enjoyed the, not only being first, but you enjoyed the orienteering also? Yeah, I really did. I, I love this uh, type of terrain where it's uh, all these hilly, open areas, and it's great. Yeah, and I had Froni Koenig Salmi here, and she had been talking to Simone and a little bit about your tactics, that you really wanted a good start, and then you have Simone on the last leg. How do you see this now for, for T7? It's very exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. It's, uh, 
<coughs> but it's a lot of pressure on, on the two legs before Simona, I guess. Uh, but I think they, they really will make a good uh, legs and, and I hope they keep focus and, and calm mm -hmm. because it's really fun up there. Because they probably expected you to be very early. That was part of the plan, that you would be very early, so they were not surprised. So um, hopefully they can stay calm and just be safe. Yeah, I really think so. They okay. are really good orienteers, both of them, so I trust them. Okay, thank you. Congratulations with your great uh, first leg, and we hope all the best for, uh, for T7. Thank you. Okay, that was uh, Lilian Forsgren, and we are waiting on the second TV control very shortly. So we are out on uh, the beach again. The second leg is uh, underway. And we are very interested to see the leading group. And they are coming here. MS Parma is the first team. Maya Sianoya, then Alfta Ösa, and uh, also Uko Tisaren, Luisa Persson. I started uh, very well on this uh, second leg. The second leg is uh, shorter than uh, the first one. It's about uh, six kilometers. And the last thing that uh, Kroni Koenig told me, she has left me for a moment now and uh, will come back uh, a little bit later in the relay, but the last thing she said was, don't forget MS Parma, they have also a very exciting team, so we will follow them. Sevedalen is um, uh, doing well. Um, Amelia Björklund on the second leg, after Maria Magnusson stayed on uh, the first. And uh, Jala, it's the second team of uh, Jala. Also Fossum is, uh, is here. We have about uh, yeah, 1 minute 20, and I'm joined by Holly Orr, the first uh, team runner and the first leg runner for uh, Halden, uh, finishing about three minutes behind, was it, the first leg? So, um, so how was it out there? It was tough, I think, as expected. Some really nice forests, some very fast bits, and then you go into this really nice detailed um, areas, and you have to have close contact with the map and yeah. yeah so we'll try to put the picture on also now from the tv control because it's interesting here to wait for um, wait for eva on the on the second leg uh, are you satisfied with your race or um <laughs> i think i'm partly satisfied i i felt good in the beginning and then towards the end when it spread out i think some of the gaflings i perhaps didn't take the best route and you lose some time when you lose the train so but I think Eva is in fantastic shape and she is really good in this type of forest, so I'm not worried. And uh, Halden, of course, you, you, you don't have Mari fasting on the team now. Uh, what kind of expectations do you have? Here comes Eva now. Um, I think, yes, it's a shame we lost Mari, but we still have four really good runners and we are here to enjoy ourselves and enjoy the Finnish festival. So. 2.35, 2.35 now, so it's... Um so looks quite good. So what have you set any target? For the finish, I think we we haven't been specific in our target. No. We we want to go out and enjoy every race and be part of uh, a good team in Halden. Okay, thank you and the best of luck for the rest of the Halden team. Thank and you. Uh, we go back to the pictures. Beckelage is uh, here. Halden was two and a half minutes behind. And we have 20, almost 30 teams have passed here. Fredrik Star is uh, here. And now 
We have made a little bit of switch. We have uh, sent Frone Koenig Sami out for a while, and we have changed from Swiss to French. Frédéric <laughs> Tranchant, welcome. Ah, hello, thanks. <laughs> you are uh, an athlete with Paimian Rusty, the organizing team here, so you have uh, cannot, cannot run uh, yourself. Yeah, absolutely, but it's also really interesting to be uh, on the other side for, for once. It's a lot of things to do, and uh, for this Yukola, it was really impressive to see all the work made by the, the guys, and uh, it's a really impressive organization. And uh, you will be with us now for a while, and also during the, the men's relay, of course, uh, during the night. So let's have a look at the pictures again. And uh, there is some GPS tracking going on here. We saw on the first leg there was a long leg from the lake, and now they have a bit shorter. And um, now they're into quite tricky area here. MS Parma is uh, making quite a big mistake here, I think. You have also been out <laughs> testing the testing the forest. It is very changing, and. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, along the lake, it's a sandy area where they have been uh, um, digging. And uh, when you, we come to the hills, then it's more uh, stony and uh, some cliff and a lot of details in the forest and also harder forest to run. So it's really different. They have to be really careful and, uh, and uh, do a really good uh, technical job. And we saw that on the first leg for the women that um that um, there were some mistakes after um, after a while. Okay, so we are out in uh, forest, and this is Alfta Ösa leading on the second TV after three uh, kilometers. Very good race so far by um, by Alfta Ösa, and she's all by herself. And here comes Tisaren, still uh, still hanging on. So we see the mistake of uh, of MS Parma, and on this terrain, it's uh, it can be really difficult to relocate if uh, we don't uh, keep contact. So just two teams, one minute, and now we <laughs> it's it's more crowded now. We also have a lot of first leg runners still here. Tampere and Pirint already. Ah. And Yala also, one minute behind. Tampere and Pirint and Yala, they are doing very well on this um, on this second leg. Sevedalen is here. Poyan Teti is here. There's been a lot of changes since the changeover. Dom Narve. Lexan. Lexan. Yala second team is here. And still Fossum all the way up there. But uh, yeah. Poyan Teti was uh, close to three minutes behind at the changeover. So a lot of things uh, have happened here. Ms. Parma, after the mistake, two minutes uh, behind now. I, it's a big mistake for for such a short uh, relay. So, but we saw that also on the first uh, leg that uh, a lot of athletes were were making mistakes. Uh, Ukulina's second team, Halden, 2:28, looks still uh, quite stable for Eva Judenikova, bringing uh, Halden closer to the leaders. Okay, so if we look at uh, the favorite teams, we can see that uh, Alfta Ösa is there, T-Siren is there, Yala is uh, also there. 
quite close to the leaders. Uh, Lexan is in ninth position, only one and a half minute behind. They have Helena Jansson and Rahel Friedrich on the two next legs. Helena Gustafsson is running now, so Lexan is one of the favorites at the moment. Dom Narve still there too. And Linnea Gustafsson, she can still pick up sometimes. Mm. Still quite close, I think. Alfta Ösa, Sara Eskilsson, Elsa Jansson for Jäla and Anna Hataya for Poyantet. They are the three fastest out there uh, between the changeover and the three kilometer mark. And also Annika Gustafsson for Lidingö. She is actually the fastest now together with uh, Tampere Pyrinte and uh, Poyantetti. They are the three uh, fastest. MS Parma has lost about three minutes in total from the changeover to the best uh, best running time. Ah, some nice forest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a, some changes in between very open forest like this and more uh, green forest with lower limited vis uh, visibility and also runability. And we also saw some pictures from the first leg in the women where there was more rocky and uh, and quite tough. Mm, that's true. It can be tough for the ankle if uh, the girl are not prepared. So Kove, he has uh, been out there now. Beckelage is um, Beckelage has lost some time. They are more than three minutes behind now. Uh, Beckelage. And uh, Fredrikstad is uh, in 27th position. Lillomarka has also been there. Erla, Linköping and Eksjö. And it has been about four minutes since the leaders were, uh, were out there. And um, it's only 700 meters from this TV control until the next one, like it was on the, on the first leg. And still, it feels very open, this relay. Mm, yeah, that's true. It's uh, still a lot of teams that can win. No team has opened up any gap. No team uh, has emerged at, uh, as the biggest, biggest favorites. So we have moved to 3.7 kilometers. I'm trying to look at the leading teams because there are so many teams now from the from the first leg. This is how we are used to see the used to seeing the pictures at Yukola. Alftaösa, Sara Eskilsson was leading just 700 meters ago, but she was really close with Tisaren. Yeah, nine seconds. Yala, Yala is leading now. Elsa Jansson and Hidden Kier Hidden Kier Hidden Kier Teet is also there. Ah, changes again from the first leg. It was also changing in this part of uh, of the terrain. And Elsa Jansson for Yala, she had the best time on this leg at uh, Tio Mila. And uh, Lexam. Yeni Patana did a really good job. Now she was one minute behind at the former radio control, and now she's back with the lead. So where is Tisa then? There is Carolina Heuskård for Tom Narve. And uh, here also Uko Kåre, who is still uh, up there. But some mistake now for Tisa then, I think. Ah, she's coming there maybe. No, oh, that was the first leg. Alfta Ösa, 48 seconds behind. It was short since the uh, last radio control, but it seems that a lot of can happen. Yeah, it happened things here also on the first leg. So uh, in these forkings, Göteborg Majorna is now up to seventh. One minute behind. Well, this is uh, very good. Uh, Halden is coming. And Halden is coming. Only 1.20 behind now for Eva Jurenikova and also MS Parma. So they have taken one minute on the leaders. But that has also Yala done. So um, 
It's because of uh, mistakes from Althusa and Tisaren. Here comes Tisaren. Lost one and a half minutes. Uh, but they are one and a half minutes behind and they were one minute ahead of Yala. So the mistake is actually two and a half minutes for Tisaren on only 700 meters. It may also, so do you, because of uh, the four kings, different four kings? So we will see. Thirteen teams. As uh, punched here, Tamperem Pirinto is the next team to arrive. 217 behind. Still still doing okay. Here we can see Tisaren. Ah, this is a very rocky area. This is a technical area. And she here she has the marsh. But have to go back. And then to the control. Ah, probably she didn't know where she was when she was going down in the slope. Mm. And then it's really tricky to understand because there are a lot of rocks and cliffs, probably not all in the map. So if you are not sure where you are and with the good direction when going down, it's it's really a risky area. And this had lost some time. Bekelage is in 17th uh, position now. And Elsa Jansson is the fastest so far on this leg, just like she. She was in um, in Tiomila. Tisaren still not very far behind, uh, only one minute forty. The next TV control is after five point two kilometers towards the changeover. Leading uh, and we have Panorus, but it's still the second team of Panorus that's uh -huh. ahead of the first team. Annelinde is running here for Panorus' second team. Even with a strong finish, it would be hard to go back to the lead, probably. Yes, and um, <laughs> the problem for Panorus is that they have Mayalman Ida Bubak on the first team and not on the second team. And they are not allowed to switch now. It's too late. And, uh, more than six minutes behind on the first leg, I think, was uh, was Militran Ödu. And Tenui also have the second team ahead of the first team. Lilo Marka is uh, here, and Fossum also is here. It's a group of uh, Norwegian teams, this. Kove. Mario Nittinen is running for Kove. They have the world champion from last year on the long distance, Svetlana Mironova, on the last uh, leg. And Okorion has Nadia Volinska on the last leg. So they are still not more than five minutes behind. So if they can stay within the five minutes, then they. Um, Get a really good position in the end. Fredrikstad also still staying up there. And Stora Tuna, 5 minutes 12 behind for um, Johanna Alansson. As well as Ukoline. As well as Ukoline. Irina okay. Koselo. And Karl Van Rasti. And Panorus. Ah. So here are four teams that wish they were four minutes higher up. It's quite tough to catch five minutes. They uh, need some mistakes from the top teams. And it might happen. And they have a good group, so they can run really fast towards the end. So Frul is team number 39 to come uh, here. And we have six minutes. Six minutes gone. It should be about nine minutes from the from this TV control until the next one. So in three minutes, we will have them to the next TV. And that's uh, quite close to the finish because this leg is only six uh, kilometers in total. Lot of Swedish teams. And the gap are quite big. 
I think. Yeah, they have run in total in the relay now close to 12 kilometers, and we have 43 teams within six minutes. And we have had quite a lot of changes in the lead, mm. uh, too. So, um, it's very interesting with Lexan. They have Helena Jansson now on the third leg. Mm -hmm. If Linnea Gustafsson can stay in the lead here, Helena Jansson can open up quite a good gap to Rahel Friedrich on the last. She was in fantastic shape in the World Cup uh, middle distance, Helena Jansson. Took a clear win there just uh, a week ago. Absolutely, but also Yara has, uh, I think, Emma Kickenberg in the third leg, so yeah. she can be really strong. So we are soon leaving this uh, TV control here, moving to uh, the next one. To see if um, Jala is still uh, leading. Elsa Jansson has put Jala up in the lead and it's pretty much the same thing that was happening in Tiomila that Jala was leading uh, towards the end and then Elin Skans uh, lost to Emma Johansson in the last leg and we might have another fight between Johansson and uh, Skanse because uh, Dom Narve is also up there and now we are waiting at this point. And still a lot can happen because we have seen a lot of changes already so it may continue. It may continue and uh, let, let's hope it continues because it's exciting when there are changes and now we uh. have leading here <laughs> and uh, hidden kit you don't care to yet. I need to practice more. And I think Lydia Gustafsson is coming also for Lexan. Annika Gustafsson is running fantastic on this second leg for leading her. And here is Lydia Gustafsson. 23 seconds behind for Lexan. Oh, she's and Yala is coming. And Yala is coming. Elsa Jansson is still, uh, still here. Oh, but Annika Gustafsson, she's two minutes faster than anyone else so far on this leg. Karolina Heusgård is here, Uko Kore is also here. Martina Ruch running the second leg, Kajsa Rispi did the first one. Jenny Eriksson, Lisa Rispi, Uko Kore are big outsiders at the moment. Hafta <laughs> Ösa also here, one minute behind. Ah. What about leading her? Uh, they have a very strong runner also on the third leg with uh, Anna Bachmann, who did a great leg at uh, Tio Mila. So Annika Gustafsson really putting uh, leading her uh, back up uh, in the top on this uh, second leg. Ah, we are waiting for the changeover. Tampren Pirinte also. Sonja Kyrulet, Amperen Pirinte with Venla Niemi and Saila Kini on the next two legs. They are in eighth position out there, one and a half minute only behind. So Tamperen Pirinte, it's a great job by the two young athletes for uh, Tamperen, Karola and Kyrule. And Halden was also at the radio control, 149 behind with Eva Jorinikova. Mm, and Göteborg Majorna and MS Parma also. So. Uh, Ingi Atayat is coming. Jenny Patana for uh, Hidden Kjertayet. And Linnea Gustafsson, she was 20 seconds behind. Now she's up there. And Yala also is uh, coming towards the changeover. A 
very experienced runner on the third leg. Hiden uh, Kjertejet, uh, Estonian uh, Anu Åkerman, formerly Anu Annos. And then they have uh, Julia Novikova, the Russian, on the last leg. So Hiden uh, Kjertejet is doing well here at uh, Venla and a great second leg. <laughs> She's in a really good position. Uh, they will probably be or uh, in the fight to be among the first Finnish team. Yes. And she is putting uh, Hiden Kjertejet uh, all the way up here. But oh. here comes Linnea Gustafsson now. <laughs> and she wants to change over first. And I don't think that uh, Patana saw her coming. And suddenly Lexan is uh, changing over first. Uh -huh. Ah, it was a little bit pity actually on Patana because she was leading all the way. And then Linnea Gustafsson was just a little bit stronger. And that means that Helena Jansson on the third leg will head out in the lead. Just ahead of Anu Åkerman. And Jala is also across the finish line here. 25 seconds behind. Ah, just a few meters more <laughs> for uh, Jenny Patana and she would change over first, but uh, it was Linnea Gustafsson. We were there, and Uko Kora and Dom Narvet, Lena Eliasson. One and a half minute, uh, sorry, 45 seconds behind. 45 seconds behind, approximately. And for Yala, it's Emma Klingenberg. This is going to be a really interesting third leg to set everything up for the fourth and the final one. Of Tarsa, 106. This is Uko Kore, which is uh, a small surprise so far. Don't know it. 50 seconds behind. Her score has done stable, good race. Bringing the relay on. And Tampere and Pirinto is waiting. Venla Niemi. One minute, uh, 20 seconds behind. Göteborg Majorna is also here. They are, as we said, without Judith Wider. They have Christine Berglia, the Norwegian, on uh, the third leg. And Anna Forsberg is running the last one. And Halden now up to ninth position. So Eva Jurenikova must be one of the fastest on this um, Second leg, it's uh, Sonja Kyrelo actually for um, Tampen Pirinto, who is the fastest so far. And uh, just one second ahead of Linnea Gustafsson. Ida Marien Esbjörgul waiting for uh, the map. And leading. Uh, who was leading for a while? Annika Gustafsson and was running so well and uh, she has lost two and a half minutes towards the end of the course. Anna Backman. Maybe thought she was going out in the lead for a while, but now she um, has to catch up instead. Tisaren, two and a half minutes behind. They have Simone Niglia on the first leg. On the second, on the last leg, sorry. Mm. Luisa Passion changing over to Andreas Svensson. Beckelage is in 18th position. Lina Hagman to Lena Godager Kors. Ah, it was a good start for Annika Gustafsson, but she lost some time. <laughs> 
Panorus second team is in 19th position and uh, Nydalen now is up to the 20th position. This is a very good position, very good race by Anne Johanne Lin on this um, leg. Bringing, uh, bringing Nydalen up from 47 to uh, 20 on this leg. Fredrikstad is arriving here, 25th position, Marie Olausen taking uh, Fredrikstad up from 30 to uh, 25. And uh, five minutes approximately these teams uh, behind uh, the leader, Lexam. We know that it's approximately nine minutes out to the first TV control on the third leg. The third leg is 6.2 kilometers, so it's very close to the second one when it comes to length. Lilo Marka is uh, changing over. It's about six minutes now since uh, Lexam did the changeover. Karavan Rasti in 34th position. And Ukoline also has been to. Um, the changeover, Rina Kuselo bringing Linné from place number 60 to place uh, 31. With a stable uh, leg here, losing about one minute to the best uh, leg times. And struggling also with uh, the changeover, Kalavan Rasti. Amelie Chatang not uh, ready when uh, Paula Isomarco arrived and Pan Orus is in 37th position now. So it will not be a victory for a Danish team. Fossum, Thrul still close together for um, for Norway, Kuro was sent to Line Wegner Hot. And Thrul uh, will also be uh, changing over. Sara Profors is waiting. And soon eight minutes, so uh, very soon we will have the first TV control out on the third leg. Who is first there? Is it Helena Jansson?
So we have uh, Daniel Gustafsson here. Yeah. First to the changeover for Lexam, just on the last meters. Yeah, indeed. I had to try. <laughs> you wouldn't let uh, Yanni Patana be first at the changeover? Uh, I didn't think so when I saw her after the last control, but then I felt I just took inch by inch, and then I thought I'll give it a try. So you brought Lexam from 17 to first? Yeah. So yeah. it was perfect race, or? Yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, maybe some minor mistakes, but I've just I've done my own orienteering and yeah, focus on that, so that was good. How was it out there? It was changing some Amazing. places fast and some places more yeah, technical. Yeah, exactly. It's a great variation between the fast run parts and uh, the tricky parts where you really have to step up and do the orienteering. Yeah. Uh, so it was great fun. And now on the third leg, Helena Jansson is running, and we see from the computer that on the first Radio control, she is 40 seconds now ahead of Yala. So she has she has a gap now and one minute and one second on the computer to Domna Erve and uh, Lena Eliasson. So she's running all by herself, so probably yeah. she's enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, I think she does. Yeah, she loves it. And she, yeah, she's used to these situations and she enjoys it, so I'm sure she will. So can you win this now? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can. We can make a great result here today and yeah we, we're just happy if we do our own best so yeah <laughs> and so far it looks very good thank you very much uh, thanks Gustafsson for this um, second leg and as uh, I just said it's about um, 40 seconds the gap for Helena Jansson out on uh, the third leg, 40 seconds ahead of uh, Emma Klingenberg, one minute, one second ahead of um, Lena Eliasson. Dom Narve, Tamperen Pirinto now up to fourth position uh, out there. Two minutes behind, and uh, Alfta Ösa, Hiden Kjertet, Halden and uh, Göteborg Majorna has also uh, punched at this first radio, and Helena Jansson is the fastest out there, which is the fastest time, 10 seconds ahead of uh, Lena Eliasson. Oh, hold on, Majorna leading her. We don't have pictures from this control at the moment. Apologize for that, but uh, hopefully we will get some pictures uh, again very shortly. We remember that it's um, on this third leg. It's only one kilometer from uh, the first to the second TV, so uh, we should be quite shortly also at the, the second TV if the first one is not working. 100%. Ah, Lexan, they have the Swiss uh, Rahel Friedrich on um, the last leg. After Helena Jansson is running now. It will be interesting to see how Rahel Friedrich can do in a terrain like, uh, like this. It would be also interesting to see if Helena Jansson can, be, can send her with a good gap before the other teams. But now we have really good uh, girls coming. Helena Jensen, Emma Klingenberg and Lena Eliasson. Yeah. So, so it would be interesting. Still very open, this uh, relay. t -Saren. we are following them still because they have Simone Nigli on the, the last leg. And they are four minutes behind now in place number 13. Andrea Svensson is uh, running. She has lost one and a half minute more to um, Helena Jansson so far. Are, we apologize for some small technical problems with uh, the production at the moment, the pictures, so we don't have any from the first um, TV control. So we'll have to watch all the athletes going in and out. It's a uh, big, big uh, party. It's the biggest orienteering event in the world. A 
And unfortunately, still some technical problems because Helena Jansson is now already at the second uh, TV control without us having any pictures from there right now. So we will just let you know from the intermediate times when we have them. Seconds behind, so uh, Jala and Tom Narvet are um, running close together. And here we are finally out in uh, the forest again, and we see the three teams that have passed this uh, control. And the next one should be uh, Tampren Pirinto, who was um, two minutes behind the last time, and it's two minutes now. And we can see Van Laniemi probably uh, might be. First leg or second leg. Ah, it was red, but it's not Van Laniemi. It's too slow. Yeah, I have Ronnie back here. And uh, after a short break, and um, ah, it's still very interesting. Yeah, there's changing all the time in the in the lead so it's uh, clearly more than technical enough to make this an exciting relay yeah i think it was very interesting to follow the second leg also but uh, you see some very strong runs and uh, some mistakes also but uh, i guess now helena she will yeah. strongly go on but there are four or five other really high top runner and uh, yeah some will drop out but yeah. you could see that before. So, so the question is, how big will the gap be mm -hmm. from Lexan and down mm -hmm. to to the others? We have Tamper and Pirinto here. We have Halden here. 2.54, three minutes. Yeah. So uh, when Laniemi has actually lost uh, 30 seconds, he has lost 50 seconds actually here. And uh, Halden, Alf Tajosa, no one is keeping up the same speed as... Um, as Helena Jansson, which is not surprising because she won the World Cup very convincingly in Sweden and uh, is in very good shape. But still prefers to run the third leg here and not the fourth. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the team tactic, but I, I guess she could run on every leg very well. But, uh, you know, she tries to focus on the short ones and she's really strong. Here are the gaps after 3.2 kilometers, and as we know, it's only uh, 700 meters to uh, the next one. So, um, but we know that those 700 meters have been very interesting because there's been mistakes on both of the legs uh, out there. And here we are on the 3.9 kilometer mark. The third TV. And so we are waiting for Helena Jansson. Probably here. Yeah, she's coming. And as always with Helena Jansson, it doesn't always seem to be very fast, but it's just so steady and she's running so well, but it, there's you don't get, often get the feeling of speed 
when you yeah. are watching. But yeah. still, it's it's I so clean and so well done. Yeah, she's very strong in finding the good lines and not any meter additionally. And uh, she has very fluent orienteering. So, one minute and 12 seconds was it to uh, Emma Klingenberg on the last uh, radio and uh, or last TV. And um, it's a quite technical area this as we have seen from the other legs so this is a place where it's possible for Helena Jansson to increase the gap if Klingenberg makes some mistakes and also Helena Eliasson was uh, just there now we are after the after the TV control a bit of a longer leg and then they head out Ah. This is very good for Lexan. The gap is bigger and bigger. We are looking for Jala. We are looking for Dom Narvet. And maybe also soon for Tampere and Pirinte because uh, it's soon two minutes now. Here's Dom Narvet. Lena Eliasson. And also Yala is coming behind there, Emma Klingenberg, 147, 150, so uh, they lost another 30 seconds. And on the last leg, it's uh, Ralf Friedrich for Lexan, Emma Johansson for Domnarve and uh, Elin Skanse for, uh, for Yala. What about Tamperen, who has Saila Kini on the last leg? Two and a half minutes now. Helena Jansson so far on this uh, leg. Uh, one minute faster than Lena Eliasson, one and a half minute faster than uh, Jala. And uh, Emma Klingenberg. Ah, how do you see Rael Friedrich on the last leg here against Emma Johansson and Helen Skanse? Yeah, of course I hope she will be strong, but I, I think it's important for her to get catch up with the orienteering and uh, yeah, uh, okay. I mean Emma is very strong. <laughs> so uh, I she hope has been in very good shape, uh, Tio Mila and then now the World yeah. Cups uh, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where she was actually on the podium as well in the middle distance. And now it's not Tampiren anymore. Now it's Alfta Ösa. Ah. Josefine Engström. They have Natalia Vinogradova on the last leg. Ah. One minute the tail on the tracking. Don Narve and Jala still quite close together. There's a forking on the top of the uh, hill. Ah. It's, it's not very good for um, Tampere Pirinte. Two girls on the first leg. Here comes uh, comes Halden first. Four minutes behind for Halden and also Tampere. She has lost. Uh, Another one and a half minute now, Vanna uh, Niemi. Poyan Tetti, seventh position. Martina Johansson. She, she runs strong. Uh, of the seven teams that have punched here so far, Tampere and Pirinte has lost the most time. She has lost more than three minutes to Helena Jansson from the start, Vanna uh, Niemi. Ah, this is what sometimes happens. You have some younger girls in the beginning and they do their job very well and then you think, okay, now we just leave it to the stars and uh, then they make mistakes. Ah, it's five minutes now and uh, Hidden Kier Tejet, who was in the lead after 
Two legs together with Lexan. Anu Åkerman now five minutes behind. And uh, I think that it is very difficult now for some of the teams that have not been here to win this relay. Because if you are more than five minutes behind at this stage, you are probably too far behind. We never know about this, Aron. <laughs> you never know about this, Aron. But... Um, Oh, I think five minutes, is a, five minutes is a lot, and I mean, they are strong runners on the last leg, so... So, Lexan and then Ayansson, I can't see her making any mistakes here. Here comes the side, I think. To the right. Andreas Svensson, six minutes. Okay. Let's keep it open for a while more. So six Swedish teams, three Finnish teams, and Halden, that's the top ten uh, so far. And we will soon go to the next TV control, but first a little bit more tracking. And here it seems like Dom Narvenjala will have a different forking, possibly. Or hopefully. <laughs> it should be quite okay to take these controls because you are on the top of the hill and you have some marshes that and and uh, hills that could help you here. Yeah, so Helena passed all the controls, but I think also when you have the right one, uh, so you could also uh, turn around a little bit more so they stay all on the same line. Here we are then on the final TV control on this uh, leg and probably waiting for Helena. Five point three kilometers. Ah, it's a little bit early, I think. But they are they are uh, some minutes ahead of um, Schedule. Ah, here she comes. Yes. Elena Jansson. Still looks so calm, so focused, just picking control by control. It will be interesting to see the gap now. Ah, Jala had, had the control uh, to the right and uh, did well there, uh, there um, Emma Klingenberg. Now just ahead of Lena Eliasson. Maybe gap is about the same, about two minutes. One minute now. All right, it will be very important now also for Tampere and Pirinte, for Halden, after Ösa, how they finished this leg, because you could end up here with having just three teams fighting for, for the win if the gap from uh, these two teams, Jala and uh, Dom Narve gets too big down to the fourth place because all these three teams have very strong runner on the last uh, leg as well and then i also towards the changeover and Rahel friedrich is waiting probably quite nervous at the moment and then it will get better when you get the map because then then you can focus but i think that's one of the most difficult places where she's going now out, but I hope she had prepared for this because they have a strong team. And uh, I mean, it, you just have to do that once. And, uh, yeah, well, when you have Helena Jansson on the leg before and also with the two first legs they had, uh, she must surely have been prepared that she could 
go out alone in the lead. Exactly, exactly. I mean, they had big plans already in Tiomila, but uh, did not succeed like they wanted. So I think that's their project now. <laughs> so one minute 40, one minute 40 now is the gap to um, to Jala and Dom Narve. So they are keeping about the same speed. And uh, they are very fast runners, uh, Eliasson and Klingenberg. They can probably take some seconds on Helena Jansson here on the long run towards the finish. Maybe it can be less than one and a half minute when they change over. But it's a great uh, third leg by Helena Jansson. She um, went out in the lead, got the map from uh, Linnea Gustafsson and uh, she kept the lead and she increased it and she will probably have the best leg time on, uh, on this third leg. We have some very Fast legs here with Emma Klingenberg and uh, Lena Eliasson, who, who will also do the World Championship Athletics for Sweden. So, um, Dom Narven Jala, they are uh, still with a chance here. On checking, she's got the right map and <laughs> already started starting with the instructions to Ralf Friedrich, who is out on the last leg. Can she hold on and give Lexan the win from start number 92? Huh? Everybody is chasing you, Rahel Friedrich. And she's meeting the other girls, so she knows exactly what uh, kind of gap she has. And the last leg is uh, nine kilometers, so it will be close to one hour of running. I think there you have to be very focused on yourself and really try to get into a competition. You can't do more than running as good as you can. But you can see here Emma Klingenberg, she's taking actually 30 seconds yeah, on yeah. Helena Jansson on the last part. So it's only 1 minute 11 now when Elin Skanse gets uh, the map. And we see Emma Jansson also here. And they were fighting at Tio Mila and they will have another fight today at Jukola. And then uh, Jansson was the strongest. We will see today. Don't know if want Tio Mila ahead of uh, Jala. But here you can see the good job of Helena in the forest. So she's really strong, and even if they take now in the running part, she had a very good orientation. Yeah, she has the best uh, best leg time. 40 seconds faster than Lena Eliasson, and 46 seconds faster than Emma Klingenberg. So, but they were two minutes behind, so um, they took about 50 seconds on the last part of the course. And 30 seconds just from the pre-warning to the finish. And Haldan and Alfta Ösa. Two and a half minutes at the changeover. So it will be a little bit more. Halden, another Swiss, Sabine Hauswirt on the next leg. And Natalia Vinogradova for Alfta Ösa. I think it will be a Swedish team who wins. I think it will be one of the three teams that have changed over now that uh, one of these teams will take this because they have such strong runners on the last leg and it's very difficult to see all three of them messing up because they have uh, more than two minutes. Even Dom Narven Jala have more than two minutes down to Halden. Halden without Mari Fasting, who's still recovering from an injury she got in Scotland. Training camp. And 
and Sabina Hauswith is also a strong, strong runner, but on the paper she's she's not stronger than the three ones that are already there. No, exactly. I mean, uh, they they have to do that job first. But uh, she, she, Sabina is strong, but I think she never had this kind of position also. And uh, hope she did take the chance to experience this and. Uh, Succeed also. Yeah, Halden doing much better than they did at uh, Tiomira, and uh, they were only in 13th position. So even without Mari, they are doing well. And uh, also Vinogradova waiting here for Alfta Ösa, who we had among our 15 top teams, or I had among the 15 top teams, and they are um, they are there, they are doing well. Now it's another gap. Tampiren Pirinto is coming. Saila Kini and also Poyantetti. Sofia Hayanen is going to run the last leg. So Hayanen and uh, Kini, two of the Finnish national team runners, will head out together. Venla Niemi is probably not happy with her race, losing about three and a half minutes to Elena Jansson. Martina Iwansu about one minute faster. It's a lot of running the last kilometer, and they are really tired. Yeah, when they but the, I mean, the girls are fighting. That's really nice to see. They give everything, and every second counts to give the next runners <laughs> seconds into the forest. Fighting. This is Julia Novikova waiting. This means that uh, Hidden Kierteet is probably coming soon. And uh, we will make a short switch here. If, uh, and uh, we have Swift. Made a short switch here, and Ronnie Koenigsalm is replaced by Helena Jansson. Yeah. Where? <laughs> who is leading with Lexan? Yes. How was it? Oh, it was fun but tough. Yeah. It was very varying, both uh, physically very fast, and also some technical parts with the orienteering. You had to really slow down. I liked it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see, I, here I have the results and the leg time, and you see that you are fastest. Wow. On this leg, about <laughs> 40 seconds yeah. faster than Lena oh, and 45 seconds faster than yeah. Emma. But you were actually one and a half minute ahead. But yeah, I figured. I figured it was so much running in the end, and yeah. I, I was really tired. Uh, they took about 45, 50 seconds. And these girls are yeah. the best runners in the world. So I'm pleased. And for Lexan, um, what was your tactic when you put up the team like this? Uh, it, it was. Uh, I actually couldn't run the last leg. I haven't been running so far. I've been running about 40 minutes as longest, so the last leg was out of option for me. And then we tried to make it as good as possible, everybody comfortable with their legs and uh, getting to do something you, you know you're good at. And this was, I think, a really good choice for us, yes. So how have, we, how have you prepared now Rahel, for the last leg? Because <laughs> she, she was probably prepared to go out in the lead because yeah. you would have thought that this might happen. Yeah. So how have you prepared her for this <laughs> job? Rahel, she's a girl who can really keep her cool. And I tried to give her as much positive energy as I could in the running, giving her a big smile, a thumbs up, and just uh, to focus on the orienteering and just enjoy herself. Because there is a lot of technical orienteering out yes. there. We see a lot of parts where there is fast running, but there is yeah. also a lot of technical orienteering. And if there is a smile on Rahel's face when she comes to the finish line, we will be pleased no matter what place we're in. Okay. So, and <laughs> about yourself, about uh, the foot, is it uh, getting all the time better? Is it okay? Yeah, I, I'm up to about five hours of running per week. Yeah. And I think I'll have to settle for that for some months now. I'm, yeah. I'm feeling this is kind of what I can handle right now. So mm. I'm... I'm uh, staying in the pool and on the bike for some hours every week. Yeah. Yes, so that will be fine for the relay and the uh, middle distance in uh, Scotland. Yeah, I'm hoping so. Mm. I think I, I have what, what it takes to, to do good performances on the World Champs. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you, Helena Jansson. Good to see you again. And yeah, thank uh, you. congratulations with a great performance. And we thank hope you. the best for Lexan. Yeah, I will cheer on that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Okay, so that was uh, Helena Jansson, and um, ah, very satisfied with her performance, and uh, said that she was also expecting uh, Emma and um, and uh, Lena to take some time at the end of the course because they are the two best runners of all. So um, yeah, it will be interesting to see. We have uh, how much since the changeover? Ten minutes. Ah, means that we should soon have. Them out on the first, uh, Ralf Friedrich out on the first TV control on the last leg because they uh, take about 10 minutes uh, out there. 2.1 kilometers. And 24 teams has changed over. again still the lake no beach this time it's another control it comes Ralf Friedrich for Lexan Helena Jansson had a lot of confidence in Ralf Friedrich, said that she was very calm and, and was a runner who could really just take the map and just focus on the orienteering and just take control by control and not bothering too much about the others. Yeah, I think she, she's quite calm and uh, I hope uh, she will not be very confused from the others, but uh, we will see. When she can stay there and do that her job, she's a very strong orienteer. Mm -hmm. Ah, it looks like Yala is coming a little bit closer. It says 38 seconds down here on the GPS um, graphics. It was 111 at the changeover, but it's not. It's more than 38. And this is Tom Narve. This is not Yala. Emma Johansson was 1 minute 29 behind when she started. 108. So she has taken uh, 20 seconds approximately. And no Yala. Which is a little surprising because we saw her on the tracking. We have Dom Narve in the picture, and we have Dom Narve here. Lena Eliasson, you just saw Emma Johansson out from the forest. One minute, eight seconds. So she had taken 20 seconds. So it looks like a good start. Yeah, but right now I think she's going in the wrong direction. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's made a good start. Okay, but there is uh, another leg. Uh, the fourth leg is different. I think they are on uh -huh, the other so side of the lake. They are not on the on the sand, but they are on the other side. So okay, it wasn't their course. I just yes. saw her running. Yeah. Okay, we I will, hope she's doing we'll, the right thing. We will thing. wait when the map gets back. Uh, but how was your race? Uh, it was good. It was a struggle because I was uh, uh, running against some of the best girls in the world. And uh, today they were not... Uh, uh, my legs were not really that fast. But I was uh, trying to do good orienteering. And I saw Emma Klingenberg lots of times. She had faster speed, but I could... Uh, catch her a little bit so I'm very satisfied now it looks better yeah it was they are just running in the, around in the beginning. there is uh, she was like some green area and some yeah. 
earth banks there. They are going around out to the track and... Um, yeah, that's good. Now it looks okay. I it just could, could also be possible to go on the left side here and go actually mm -hmm. all the way around on the other track. But uh, yeah, maybe. All, th all three of them is choosing the same. Yeah, and uh, I think it will take a while before you can catch a lot of seconds. Uh, but uh, if Lexand is making any small mistake, Emma will be there and try to catch her. And uh, uh, this looks really good. Uh, we have, but we have been doing three. Good legs mm. this far. Staying then. all the way close to the top and very stable and all the time being very close to the lead because there's been a lot of changes mm. in the lead and it seems like there's been some mistakes also done. So but MI once must have a lot of confidence from both from Tio Mila and the World Cup and she must feel very strong. Yeah, uh, and uh, we talked earlier and she knew that I was uh, a bit scared to be tired, but uh, she said that just do a solid race and uh, I will take some more responsibility now because you have been running last leg mm. so many times uh, and it's really good when we can change and yeah. the, the team is very strong and today everyone has made uh, very good races and yeah. uh, just what we are supposed to do. Yeah. So we will see if you can do both Tio Mila and Jukula in the same year, it doesn't happen so often. So. Um, no, but I think like top three or top five is uh, still very good yeah. because uh, we have a lot of other competitions also to run in mm. between, and uh, uh, the World Champs is a big goal for uh, me, Emma, and Dana. Mm. Of course. Thank you very much, uh, Lena. Congratulations with your good uh, race. And we see it's still about one minute here uh, on the tail of the tracking, so um, it's still very interesting. Yeah, I think that yeah, yeah, Emma la. is the one making <laughs> oi, oi, oi. something strange. Oi, oi, oi. What has happened to Elin Skansa here? She has actually crossed. She the crossed path the path and, and gone out to the marsh. Yeah. This is quite bad for Yala. Now it's only two teams in the lead. It looks like. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. You Thanks. can follow the, re the rest of the race from uh, from outside. It will be uh, interesting for sure. Thank you. So seven teams has punched here. Halden is 3.45. Uh, we have Tamperen, we have Poyanteti. We have now uh, Linné, Catherine Taylor leading her. Uh, is five and a half minutes uh, behind. And Hiden, Kien, Hiden Kertiet is uh, five and a half minutes behind in the 10th uh, position. And we saw, I don't know if you saw it when Lena was here, Froni, but yeah, Lau yeah. was out in the marsh there. Yes, yes, I think she... What happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only <laughs> Ellen Skansen knows. We tried to figure out, but I think she made a direction mistake, yeah. ran over the path, ran over the other path, and think she's going into the green and she was yeah. in the march, so bad mistake. Yeah, but it can be... Um, it means probably about two minutes, because she will now be caught up by Alfta Ösa and the other teams, and... Um, Ah, we recognize this woman, Simone Nigli. But it's six and a half minutes. And it's probably, even for Simone, too much. We will see. But uh, she's still training and uh, still in a very good shape. Yeah, I think she's competing a lot. I yeah. don't know about her training, but I think when it's coming to the competition, she is strong. Yeah, and probably on a race about one hour like this, uh, she um, she can s be close to having the same speed as, as before because then she had other competitions to think about as well. I mean, like Lena said, they have been running a lot of competitions now in Sweden during May, and then it was the World Cups, and now also this. So um, yeah, I think for those running international competitions, you have so many. Uh, big events, so you can't focus on all of them. And for Simone, that's the highlight yeah. now. So yeah. perhaps she ha gets some a uh, additional ed energy. Yeah. And also Nidalen, Anna Magdalena Harsky Norberg. We saw she has had a lot of good fights in the forest with Simone during the years, and she's now putting also Nidalen higher up on the on the results. But they got a bad start, Nidalen. They were about seven minutes behind already on the first leg, and now they are still seven minutes behind. So. Um, so they are doing well. 
and Bekelag is also up there. And the good thing with the last leg is that we get to see much more of the map and uh, GPS. Sixth control, seventh control. There are some uh, hills, and MI1 Son is getting a little bit closer to Ralf Friedrich all the time. And this is the next TV after 3.4 kilometers. Still five and a half kilometers to go. It looks like MI1 Son is getting a little bit closer all the time and that they might be together soon. Yeah, I think Ral is doing a good job. She's going very steadily and uh, it looks controlled. But yeah, we, perhaps Emma's a little bit stronger, so she will catch up more and more. But I think it's still half of the way. It will be some demanding control, mm. so a small mistake and it can go in both directions. And then the physical part on the last leg, yeah. we will see. Yeah, and uh, we will see also if they can keep calm and uh, keep all the other all the other teams uh, behind them. They have quite a big gap now after Jala's uh, mistake. Ralf Friedrich, Lexa. Twenty minutes until this point. So we wait for. Uh, my one song, one minute, eight seconds. It was at the last TV control. We have seen some from the tracking that she might be a little bit closer. Maybe about 50 seconds. Well, maybe even less. 37 seconds. She has taken a little bit more than half of uh, the gap from the change rope. Uh, here comes the long leg. Not really any big route choices from eight to nine, just... No, but I think that's a very good leg because, okay, you go direction, keep high speed, and then you come to the last hill and then downhill into mm. the edge. So you have to focus and you have to, you know, where you can run fast and when you really have to catch up with your orienteering. And there's a question about how to attack control number nine, if you want to attack it from the top or if you want to try to go a little bit to the right and then then take it on the slope, but it's probably too long to go yeah, I all don't the way think around. So. So they yeah. have to go straight. They, go, they come straight, but uh, yeah, it's not so easy to catch up just before the control where you are, and uh, it's going down into the deep forest. <laughs> so and the control is quite far down. Yes, uh, the, yes So it is. you have to be brave, and because yeah. when you go steep downhill, you are you tend to want to search a little bit too early because you are afraid mm. to get too far down. Yeah, and the forest is changing there, so you have to dare to go down. <laughs> well, two minutes. This control we will see soon on the GPS how they are doing on this long leg if if Domnarve can uh, get in contact with Lexan on that part on this long leg because in some parts there the visibility will be better and she might see Ralf Friedrich in front of her. Here comes the next team. Jala. No, Alfta Ösa is in front. I saw Elin Skanse behind there, but... Uh, she catches nearly one minute to Rahel. It's yeah. Strong. From the start, she has actually taken one minute 40, all the way from the changeover. From... Uh, Yala is 2 minutes 42 now. And she has uh, lost 3 minutes to, to Alfta Ösa. So at the moment we have a battle for the win between Leksand and Domnarve. We have a battle for third place between Alfta Ösa and Yala, and it's only about Sweden. But we are waiting for Halden. And we are waiting for the Finnish teams. We hear someone, and it's uh, Halden. Sabine Hauswitz. And it is Poyantetti. Which was your favorite team before 
We started and it seems they yes. might be the best finish team. She had a good partner, Sofia. Also Damper and Purinte. Yeah, Salakini is here. Yes, Sofia Hayanen is uh, the second best so far on this leg. Vinogradova is the fastest one. And uh, Salakini is the third fastest one. So you see now Rahel is turning around and I think you should go just straight. Yeah. <laughs> I think she wants. I think she wants to have the entrance to the control to attack the control uh, from the side of the the hill, not to go over the last hill. But uh, she's running. It's quite much longer distance. Yes, she's yes. Running. And I mean, these hills, it's nothing. You just for a Swiss, it should be nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Especially for a Swiss, it should be nothing. Yeah. Because in Finland there are normally there are contour lines and then there are form lines, so it might look also steeper on the map yeah, than it actually is yeah. in, in, uh, I mean it's so in the forest. I mean, it's so fast here, you could just go straight. Okay, so maybe maybe Domnaire will be first on the ninth control. And what about Simone? She was six and a half minutes behind on the first TV. Can she get closer yeah, to this group? Aye, aye, aye. She's taken more than one minute. She will just go straight. <laughs> she will just go straight. And Catherine Taylor is there as well. And Linné, uh, with Linné, and uh, leading her is there. And Hidden Kiet is there with Julia Novikova. And Simone so far out there is 17.47. So she is 40 seconds faster than Vinogradova. She is uh, 2 minutes and 15 seconds faster than Rahel Friedrich. And one and a half minute faster than Dom Narve. So I think we can see already now that Tom Narve is ahead of uh, Lexan. So it was a little bit, shall we say, passive route choice from, from uh, Rahel Friedrich to go around there. We'll see how much time she will lose. Nidalen. 6.04. Hauskin is also doing uh, well, and um, she's one minute slower than Simona so far. Taking Nidalen up to 12th position. Nemes Parma and Beckelage. Kove is up to 15. Svetlana Mironova won the long distance World Championship last year. It was a surprise at that point. Ah, Tone Wigemir has had a good start for Bekelaga, one of the fastest on this leg out to this point. But Simone is. She's 40 seconds faster than anyone else. You see? She still knows how <laughs> still to do this. Strong. But it's five minutes still. Five minutes on five and a half kilometers. It's. Um, yeah, you have to wait for mistakes. Only by running, it's, it will be tough. But it's only three minutes to the podium. Yes. That's absolutely possible, I think, for T-Side. And Panorus is also climbing. Ida Bubak from 19 at the change over to 18. This is Rahel Friedrich. This is from earlier in the course. This is not live uh, pictures. We hope soon to get the map again to see uh, what is happening on this long leg. I 
Yeah, well, they are at the moment more than 10 minutes ahead of uh, the course setter schedule. Here is the map. And yeah. Domarve is first now. Yes. So. About one minute, it seems. The gap from Domlarve to Lexan. She lost maybe about one and a half minute of the on this uh, Ralf Friedrich. And it looks like she's a little bit afraid of this hill also. Needs to go all the way around. It's not very typical Swiss. <laughs> it's only one. It's only one contour. Yeah, to go yeah up. I mean it's 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 downhill to the control. <laughs> But uh, it's also, not, when you come from the s edge there, it's not so easy. But no. you see how Donavet is doing with the control picking. Yeah. So it was, uh, she ran very much longer than the other ones on this, uh, like Gerard Friedrich. It was an, an S yeah. on but the you route see many, choice. You see many route choices here. Yes. I'm surprised because I really think there is no reason why you shouldn't go straight. No. <laughs> and... Uh, you were right about Simona. She's staying as yes. close to the line <laughs> as she possibly can. And also Halden, Tamperen, Poyanteti. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of the Finnish teams, yes. they are going straight. Uh, you should go straight. Or the, fin speed. the Finnish runners, I should say, because yeah. Hiden uh, Kertejat has uh, Novikova and, uh, and MS Parma has Tulia Viber. So. Seems like the Swedish teams, they are a little bit afraid of going straight. Leading early near. Linnea has Catherine Taylor, so it's not really Swedish. Leading Helena Karlsson. Domnarve took the control fine. Yes, very nice. No problems. We see Poyanteti, Tampere, and Halden. They will probably be very close to Jala now. Alfta Ösa, I think uh, Natalia Vinogradova is. Uh, doing very well here. Let's see if she can find the control too. Because she's a little bit a little bit unsure here. But I think this is the control where they can be a group together because mm. one is a little bit missing, the other see her and Ah but Alfta Ösa is missing I think. She has not been at the control. And she sees uh, Lexan now and maybe she is not sure if Lexan has been to the control or not. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly the mistake you can do there in the edge. But uh, Rahel looks good. Now we will see also which forking the teams have on the next one. Which maybe B looks a little bit nicer than A. I don't know. What do you think? Looks shorter, but <laughs> we will have to see what's also behind this. But looks shorter, but it, this is a very nice leg because you, you go anyway into this edge and it's quite green, so you can't really see something. And then you come up to the hill, you have to catch up. And uh, I, I run to B, so hmm. I know how it looks like there. So. Ah, Oftaösa finally coming back to the control now. Jala is also missing. Elin Skanse not in the same shape here as uh, than she was in uh, Tiumila. And now Halden, Tamperen and Poyanteti is also coming. So we might, like you said, have yes. a bigger group. Yeah, I thought it will be that this will be the, the, the control <laughs> when I run the course. A bigger group fighting for the podium. Still Domnar and Lexan. So it means that Lexan Raal Friedrich still has Quite a gap. It's one more than one minute down to the other teams. Yes, and I think she did not see Donovet, so she's still calm. She's not having stress. So Domnarve has uh, B, Lexan has control B, Alfta Ösa, Poyanteti, Halden leading her as well. Uh, leading her is still not at the ninth control, and then it's Jala who have to go up to A, and also Tamperen to go to A, control A. And Simona will have to go to control A also shortly. 
Perhaps now I think she's not doing the really best route choice, but we will see. We'll see. On the map and takes the control number nine. Ah, out on the second TV control, which we saw. The second fastest uh, time out there. Tova Alexandersson for Stora Tuna. 30, uh, 15 seconds, 15 seconds slower than Simone. So um, Tova might catch up. She's already gone from 37 to 25 with Stora Tuna. And she's 11 minutes behind uh, the leaders. She might go up to maybe top 15 with uh, Stora Tuna. Ah, Kove. I think Simone is fine, but others are a little bit missing there, I guess. Dom Narva has taken uh, the 10th control without any problems. A little bit more concerned about where Rahel Friedrich is going right now. Yeah. Don't know if she thinks she's a little bit more to the left than she actually is, or if the marsh here will uh, guide her in the right direction. And up there it's quite green. I mean, you can't see so far. So when you're really on the top, it's nice. But Nishi's now going to the green. And uh, mm. when she doesn't have the direction, then she can miss this control. Oh, it's more than one minute now from Dom Narva. Here we see also the next forking. So they are probably, probably quite equal in time. Two big differences. Maybe still B feels a little bit faster. We will wait and see. Now Friedrich is on uh, the right track, but I think Alfa is uh, getting closer if Vinogradova can hit the control. Uh. She can make the correction because there is an opening. Yeah. And Yala and uh, Tamper and Pirinte, they are going towards A. Control number 10. So Simona is now on the road for TSRN. Next TV control is after 5.9 kilometers, then it's three kilometers to the finish. And this TV control is number 12, I think. I think we remember this from previous um, legs. Ah, Tom Narve and my one son. Looks very good what she has done so far. No mistakes, no problems. Yes, and she looked very calm and focused when she came to the TV control also. I think she's very concentrated. And probably she has a lot of self-confidence as well since Tio Mila and yes, yes. her results recently with the podium in the World Cup middle distance and um, and I think also Rahel is keeping a very good pace and it's under control what she's doing. Ah, here we see the <laughs> forkings. Finally, we got to see them because uh, this is the 700 meters between the That's why. two TV controls. <laughs> and a lot of things happened here on the first three legs. And uh, now you also see why. It's the most technical area of the course. We should have Dom Narva now in the TV control. She has been there actually, so we have some some technical technical issues with the cameras, so that we can't show you pictures from that control. But she has been there. She has punched. Am I one son? And we are waiting for the for the gap. And she's going to control D, which looks like the most difficult one of them all actually 
yeah. middle, in the middle of yes. all the cliffs uh, there. There you really have to be patient and read you in. There you, can only, you can't win anything, but you can lose a lot. It's the same situation. Yeah. It's the start. So the question now is, because MI wants on, she hasn't seen Rahel Friedrich, so she probably doesn't know if she's leading or not. Yeah, yeah. I, as I guess they haven't seen each other, but... Because uh, they went on different route choices, yeah, so... Yeah. Um, Perhaps Rahel will see now, now Natalia. Yeah. So oh, here we are at this uh, control, and Dom Narva has been here, as we said. We are waiting to see the gap. Will be more than two minutes. Um, so she's pretty no, safe at the moment. So it will be about two minutes. One fifty-seven, and Ralfrid is. She has no idea either at the moment which place she's in. Vinogradova, Altaösa. Might be a place on the top three, a podium for Alfta Ösa. This is great relay. With two Vinogradovas on this uh, team. And uh, Eskilsson and Engström. And now is a very interesting part, the next... Uh, Low four kings. So Vinogradova is 20 seconds faster than you once on on the course so far. So how long behind will Simone be at that point? Here is Poyantetti. Up to fourth position now, Poyantetti. Here is Halden. They are about three minutes behind. And also Tampere and Pirinto and uh, Jala. Ah. So they have uh, 45 seconds, 50 seconds up to. Um, up to Altaösa for the podium, and Dom Narva has taken control 13 without any problems. Ah. This looks very good for Dom Narva because uh, it looks like Emma Johansson is in full control about what she's doing. Yeah, yeah, she's doing well, and uh, it's good to group. They have different four kings only for and Jarla have the same, but the others are splitting now. Lexan has taken C, yeah. and then they then have, she's going, then she's going around again. Yeah. yeah. This is the next TV control. Well, we are waiting for uh, MI one song. They might do the double uh, this year. Dom Narve take both Tio Mila and Jukola. Venla in the same uh, year. She said it, Lena Alianson, when she was here, that they were very satisfied with the first three legs. Everybody had done their job exactly, just staying calm, no mistakes. And uh, it looks like Emma Johansson is on course of doing the same. No problems in this technical part. And it gets a bit easier now, uh, the last two kilometers um, of this race. Looks very unlikely that um, my one son shall make a big mistake on the last part, but a lot of things have happened before. She ran the first leg in 2008 when Dom Narve won, won, and she ran the first leg also in 2011 when uh, Dom Narve won. So she's been a part of both the two previous wins for. Uh, Dom Narve here at Jukola. At Venla. Alfta Ösa making a mistake here. Vinogradova have to go back. 
to control E, and then comes Poyan Teti, and then comes uh, Yala. Simone has been to, yeah, she has C. Simone has been to this, and she is in ninth position, but uh, she is still the fastest. But now Anna Magreta Hauskin for Nidal, and it's actually together with uh, Simone here. They have the two fastest times now. Hauskin only one second slower than, uh, than Simone. From the beginning, they went out together. And they are still together. Simona had a gap, but now Hauskin has closed, closed it again. They have, uh, it is three minutes up to the podium, so... There need to be more mistakes in this, in this area if uh, Nidal and Tisaren should get close to, to the top three. And Poyanteti, we should say that Sofia Hayanen is also doing very well here. She has uh, 25 seconds faster than Emma Johansson so far. So, um, I mean, Gradova and also Saila Kini has uh, done well. So, but the gap is uh, bigger and bigger. It's more than two minutes now. We have seen Alfta Ösa make a mistake, and we have seen uh, Lexan go on a route around. Ah, it will be more than three minutes now. Here's uh, Lexan, still in second place, uh, Ralf Friedrich. Ah, Helena Jansson said that uh, if only Ralf Friedrich comes to the finish with a smile on her face, we are happy whatever place we get. Yeah, so we will see. I think she did a very good performance and I hope for your smile, her smile. But they are getting closer now, behind. First Lexan, and here comes Alfta Ösa. Natalia Vinogradova, 3.21, and here's Poyan Teti. Yeah, Sofia is doing very well. 3.27. She's keeping up the pace, but uh, Yala is also coming. But Emma Johansson is actually the fastest through this technical part. And Tamperen, sixth position. Ah, the battle for second place is a really big one, but it looks like uh, Dom Narve has everything under control. If she can... Um, Correct this one, she's a little bit yeah, to the left no, now. she's going too long <laughs> <laughs> in the green. This is from earlier in the course. Following... Uh, following Emma Johansson. Interesting to see also Simone for Tisaren and... Uh, This uh, this is a nice control. It feels good to hit this control. But we can see this uh, these four controls have been used now on, in all the legs, so there are probably a lot of tracks there. So yes. if you manage to stay uh, a bit calm, it's helping you to to keep yeah. the direction a little bit. You just have to know which track to follow. Halden has lost some time here. Sabine Hauswit was with uh, the other teams. Now she is more than one minute behind. And uh, it's more than five minutes also. Simone and is not getting any closer. She's actually losing some time. Here comes Nidal, Hauskin. And Dom Narvi is okay. Took the 18th control without any problems. Nidalen is now up to 8th position. And only 30 seconds behind Halden. So, it's the Norwegian would know. It's a big fight about being the best Norwegian team. And it looked for a long time like this would uh, clearly be Halden. But uh, now Nidalen is back on. And uh, Margrethe Hausken, who, 
who went from 7th to third to 19th place in Tio Mila, did a very bad race on the last leg. She wants to show what she can do, and now she's 12 seconds faster than Simone on this last leg as the fastest one. And uh, T Siren is in ninth position. She has punched there also, um, also Simone Nigli. But it's too far up. It's still two and a half minutes for a place on the podium. Yeah, it will be interesting about second place here. Yeah. I think the girls, yeah, on the road, you see each other. And uh, yeah, last part, <laughs> some orienteering, and then also a very physical part. It will be interesting to see if they can Stress, stress each other as well because yeah. they don't know that this fight is about second place. Yeah, no, exactly. But I mean, you go for the place in the group you are. It, 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 is it about first, second, or third, or tenth? <laughs> you fight, but. Uh, but it might be nervous here on the yeah. last controls, yeah. and that yeah. means that yeah, La and Tamperen, for instance, can can get can catch closer up. and. Exactly. I still think it's too far down to need all and Tisaden, but we have to wait and see. If they yeah, that's too far. It's Friedrich, it's Vinogradova. Hayanen is obviously have a lot of uh, experience too, but uh, well, after we saw Vinogradova going out there. Dom Narve hitting control 19. Two. Seems like just when you think that uh, my one son is going a bit wrong, she just corrects herself and, and yeah. just goes straight, find the good exactly. line and but finds the control. She's going to take something which is coming to the control for her, so... Uh. She might have a feeling now that she's actually leading because her race so is so nervous. good. <laughs> no, but her, he, her feeling yeah. about this race yeah. must be really good because... Yeah, I mean, she run very stable and good. So last TV control, 800 meters to the finish. We are waiting for Dom Narve and uh, we see Johansson on the tracking. Steady course, and after this, there's a lot of running, we know. Yeah. Here she has so many runners in front of her. <laughs> she is Must coming. be nervous, you know, yeah. you all the time. Is there some, yeah. some shirts who look like something I know? But they are more in the way. Yeah. But it's quite a long time now she's, since she has seen anyone. I don't know if she has even seen anyone on the her course. I mean, she Maybe not. Really, yeah. I think she saw Yala in the beginning. Yeah, just in the beginning. Uh, yeah. And Alfta is taking this control. And going... A comp Ah, Poyantet, he has not taken the control yet. Um, ah, first mistake for um, that we have seen from uh, Sofia Hayanen. I thought she was going on the right side of the yeah, line, yeah. but she had not been to the control. But Alfta Ösa now has a small gap in the fight for second place. And the last control only Awaits for um, Dom Narve. Probably this marsh is quite heavy by now. Yesterday it was very heavy. <laughs> and now you have uh, you have about 4,000 4, people running through yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, perhaps they go a little bit more out to the right and. Mm. You could go take the road also to the left and then cut through the forest. It's also possible. I think it was forbidden on the competition map. Okay. Mm. You're not allowed to go the road. So we are waiting at the last control for the winning team of Venla 2015. Mm. And it will be for the third time in the history of this relay, Dom Narvets GOEF. Omborlenge, Sweden, MI1. So now she gets probably some confirmation that she's actually the first team to punch the last control. Ah, she knows by now. <laughs> it must be a good feeling. I think she was uh, 
hoping for it, thinking about it uh, during the last legs that I've been running so well. I have not seen anyone. I, I must be in front, but you you never know 100% until you get the confirmation. On the bridge with uh, her team, Dana Broskova, Karolina Heskord, Lena Eliasson and uh, Emma Johansson. She's doing the same as she did in uh, Tio Mila, deciding the race on the last uh, leg, bringing Dom Narve into another win. They won in uh, 2008 in Tampere, in 2011 in Virolahti. And uh, Eliasson was on the team also in 2011. Emma Johansson and Karolina Heuskor was on the both of the teams, and Broskova also in 2008. So um, all of them have done it before for Dom Narvet. And uh, it's a Swedish win. It's a lot of Swedish teams in the top of this year's uh, Venla. The winners are Dom Narvet, Skeoyev. Yeah, we talked about experience. <laughs> I think they showed again. I mean, orienteering is, uh, yeah, you have to be very focused and calm and orienteer well. But I hope for the young girls sometimes then. <laughs> yeah, and now we will see the fight for the second place because we saw the teams there. Uh, Yala, Alfta Ösa, Poyantet, Leksand, they are all together, all together. And Tampere and Pirinte just some meters behind. So Alfta Ösa had the chance but misses on the 19th. And... Uh, Tampere and Pirinto has 10 seconds up. So it's now all about who wants to run in the marsh. There are some uh, fast legs here in Vinogradova and uh, Skanse. Maybe Hyannan is not quick enough. We will see. She's going yeah. past Friedrich yeah, here. She passed so hell, yeah. It will be a fight on the last uh, part. So uh, Nidalen and uh, Tisaren cannot get all the way up to the top. So who will come first here in this camera after the marsh into the forest? Alfta Ösa, Talia Vinogradova. So no one dares to try something already now to go to the right. <laughs> no, it seems like they're just following each other. Yeah, Nobody wants yeah. to go out to the um, power line and follow it. Pepinogradova looks strong. But here comes Skanse. So Vinogradova is probably in front of these. Poyantetti and we see Lexan behind. So it looks like she loses to this group, so maybe not a smile after all for uh, Rahel Friedrich. And here is Tamperen, but I think Alfta Ösa should be in front. Uh, yeah, it's in front. Vinogradova. This is Skanse, which is probably in third place for Jala, because here is Vinogradova for Alfta Ösa. With the fastest legs of this group uh, towards the end. She has had a gap for a couple of times, but then made a small mistake, and the other ones catched her again. Yeah, but they only catched her, they didn't pass her. So I think that's a very important yeah, tactic. It's an excellent, here, so. excellent last leg yeah, by yeah, uh, Natalia Vinogradova. And together with Galina and uh, Sara Eskilsson, Josefina Engström, and they have the big flag as well. The gap is not so big <laughs> down to, <laughs> to uh, Jala. It's uh, Josefina Engström have to carry the flag, and uh, they are in second place. And Jala will probably take uh, third place. It's a great relay. Here is Ellen Skansen. It's a great relay by Yala too. I mean, the yes. girls, they were in the podium at Tio Mila and they do it again here. And Poyantetti, like last year, in fourth position and the best finish team. And Lexan, she went out first. Uh, Rahel Friedrich, she ends up in fifth position, just 15 seconds behind second place. And Tampere Pirinte. Ah, Sofia Hyland, just a few seconds faster than Emma Johansson. The last leg, and uh, Saila Kini takes Tampere and Pirinto into sixth position and also done a really good last leg. 53 minutes for the girls.
on this last leg. And it's 59 on the course setter. They are six minutes faster. That's what you said also earlier, that uh, I think they will go faster. And here is already Nydala. So Anna Magretauskin is even faster than 53 minutes, I think. And she has passed Halden. And that's good news for Nydalen. Uh, in being the best Norwegian team. Going into a seventh position. And she has even beaten Simone Nigli here on the last part of the course. Yeah, they were nearly together, Sabine, Anne-Margrethe and Simone. Anne-Margrethe showed a strong last part. Yes. Taking Nidalen into a uh, seventh position after a, a bad start. They were seven minutes behind already on the first leg, and they are only five minutes behind in the finish. She is one minute faster than Emma Johansson, so 52 minutes for Hauskin on this uh, last leg. Halden in eighth position. Then probably we wait for Tisaren. And also leading her. Uh, to come in the top ten. There is Simone also in the finish, 5.26 behind. So she is 20 seconds slower than Hauskin. This uh, last leg, they are the two fastest. Ah, she took a lot in the beginning, uh, Simona, but that was until Emma Johansson got into the lead. After that, it has been quite stable. So he's, she's 35 seconds faster than Emma Johansson on the leg in total. Yeah, I think it's also when you start behind, you push a little, push bit. little bit more in the beginning <laughs> to catch up some people. When you start first, I mean, you have to do your job on your own first. It will be leading her, Elena Carlson. So it will be six Swedish teams in the top ten, and all three teams on the podium on the top three are Swedish teams. Two Finnish, Poyanteti in fourth and Tampereen in sixth, and two Norwegian teams, Nydalen in seventh and Halden in eighth, meaning no Danish teams. Uh, in the top ten this year, Panorus is uh, soon coming. Ida Bubak is taking them up a few places on the last leg, but not enough. There's Bekkelage in eleventh position, Tone Vigmir. It's also done uh, good. Last leg, just a few seconds slower than Emma Johansson, and Panorus. Ida Bubak, be interesting to see her time. And it's 53.07, and it's the third fastest, so about 50 seconds slower than Hauske. The 12 teams in the finish, this is team number 13, uh, Kove. Yeah, hopefully we will get very shortly an interview as well with Emma Johansson. She is coming um, in here to explain what actually went on in uh, the forest. So we have 14 teams in the finish, but here is the winner. And my one son, uh, Dom Narvet. Congratulations. Thank you. How was it out there? We were wondering, when did you actually know that you were leading? Yeah, I, I never saw uh, Rahel Lexand, so I didn't know for sure, actually. But um, I felt pretty strong, and I felt that I picked my controls really good all the way. So I thought that maybe I passed her somewhere. Mm. Uh, it looked like that on the... We saw the map also that you picked the controls and we, we were saying here with Vroni that probably she has an idea that she's first because it's going so well. Yeah, yeah, I had an idea, but I really struggled not to think about it 
but uh, in the end then when I passed one uh, drink station and they started to uh, cheer really high and I yeah I yeah. thought I was first so it yeah. was a nice feeling and in the end it was yeah, about three minutes so it was quite uh, uh, quite safe so after winning Tio Mila and then winning Yukula again in the same year uh, what does this mean for Dom Narva? Uh, yeah, I think it means uh, a lot. Uh, we've been uh, we've been in the top in both Timila and Yukla for the past 10, 15 years, and um, we have a really nice tradition. It's a small club, but we are we are strong when it counts. Mm. And you have a very experienced team this year we also. Have. Was it the experience in the end that that counted? I was talking to Lena here after the third leg, and she said that sort of. All first three legs did their job exactly as they should, safe, secure, no yeah. problems. Uh, so is, it, is experience still so important in this yeah, relays? Yeah, I think it is because uh, everyone really wants to do that little extra and um, that could be uh, what decides that you get a little bit too stressed and make the mistake. But um, yeah, we know that if we run like we can, a normal solid race, then we're in the top. So. Mm. I think the experience is really important. And you have won here, of course, before with uh, Dom Narve, then you were running the first leg. Uh, how has this been for you, sort of changing from an earlier leg and then going to the last leg and actually being the decisive person? Yeah, I, it's uh, it's not a big... I think I've taken some small steps for every year and uh, um, it feel, don't, doesn't feel anything special. I just see myself as one in the team and mm. now me and Liana are the ones that take the responsible in the end so mm. but you have been in very good shape all over this this spring with the result in the world cup now a podium in the world cup and you think you are in your best shape ever your best orienteering shape ever yeah at the moment it seems so yeah okay so uh, now it's uh, for the world championships next what are your personal goals? Uh, my goal is to go there uh, really well prepared and just enjoy the, the spirit in Scotland and uh, and go to start and feel that I I can do a really nice and good race. And you can do that with a lot of self-confidence now after yeah. the two relays here and the World Cup. Okay, congratulations a lot to Thanks. to Dom Narve. It was a really exciting uh, relay to follow, and um, yeah, it was, it was a great win. It was really nice, really nice train out there. So I think the, the organizers did a really good job with the courses. Yeah. Everybody has said that so far. So yeah. <laughs> I believe it's you as well. So great, thank you. Thank congratulations. You. you go and celebrate with the rest of the team, you and you probably have to do more interviews with other journalists. They are standing here and uh, waiting. So. Thanks. Thanks. So we have taken away um, Emma Johansson, Dom Narve, and we have Alfta Ösa, Natalia Vinogradova in second place. Congratulations! Thank you. How was this? Yes. Uh, how was this for you? Second place. What is? What, what, was it a surprise for your team to be as good? Uh, we expected to be uh, in in top in top five or four, <laughs> and, but it was surprise uh, that we are we two we have second place. When I ran, I saw I saw fourth. Uh, there was written fourth, and I saw oh oh oh, <laughs> oh only one place I win, and oh it's bad. But then girls told me, hey, you are second. <laughs> we four, are second. four is the number of the leg. Yeah, 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 there. <laughs> so it was not I the place. So, <laughs> but how was it uh, in oh, the okay. forest? In the forest, you saw. Uh, yeah, you understood now the forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw it. It's a number of team. You know, sometimes yeah. it's written first or thirty-eight yeah. place or. Uh oh. <laughs> so, but how was it out in the forest? I mean, you probably saw a lot of the other teams, and you knew you were fighting. Yeah. Uh, how was the fight out uh, there? 
when I saw, start to see them, I start to be hurry, and that's why I did a lot of mistake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we saw, we saw you on the tracking on control number 19, I think it was quite close to the finish. You yes. had You had a gap <laughs> to the others, and then you were have to go back again. Yes, I, I checked. Uh oh, uh, I expect to have a control point in the end of the hill, mm. and I run and uh, see that nothing forward. And uh oh, I should <laughs> just uh, tr I turn my head around, and I saw control point behind, and I push hard. But yes, it was enough for like. But I did very bad job because I was really afraid, scared when <laughs> I saw a girl around and oh, I should fight in forest. But we were a little bit afraid in the <laughs> last part to the finish where you also had the big team flag and if you would get to the finish in time because the yeah, I was not so far behind. Uh, uh, yes, but it was but enough. Yes, I, I continued to push even <laughs> Galina told me hey, be easy, uh, they are f quite far. Yeah. But <laughs> okay, so congratulations to Kitos. you and to uh, Aftarsa. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So that was uh, a very smiling and a very happy. Natalia Vinogradova for um, for Alfta Ösa and uh, and uh, yes, it's um, it's quite easy to understand that she is happy. It must been a, must have been a very very good experience for her this, this, even if she made some mistakes, like she said. Yeah, but I mean, she she did the mistakes that you are still allowed to do in this relay, and uh, she was the first of this group. I mean, she had no chance to catch the first no, one, but no. she was the first of this group. I think she's happy. Yeah, she was uh, she was very happy. So we have 29 teams now in the finish. It's about 15 minutes since uh, Dom Narve finished uh, here. We after hidden Kiertet, which we saw, we have uh, MS Parma, Göteborg Mayonnaise nice in 16, Kalvan Rasti in 17. They probably wished for more. Yeah, but the start is quite tough to pick. Yeah, up, and then so they have been behind a little bit the whole start. time. Yeah, and then uh, Linnea. Linnea is down in 18, so some problems for Catherine Taylor because she was there around Simone in the first part of uh, the course. Mm. Fredrikstad, Norway in 19th, uh, leading a second team. Once again, the best second team leading yeah, a, a very, very strong relay strong, runners. Yeah. 20th team, Södertälje is 21st. Stora Tuna is 22nd. To Alexanderson with the third best time on the last leg, just 30 seconds slower than Hauskin, 10 seconds slower than Simone taking them from 37 to 22. Yeah, they should have be a better start. Yeah, so it was Julia yeah. Gross on the first. She was about six minutes behind. Yeah, yeah. And um, she really has the capacity to, to be all the way in the front. Uko Kore was uh, high up for long periods of this relay. They dropped to 23rd on the third leg. And Lisa Riesby kept the place on the last leg. And then Lillomarka, Norway, is in 24th. Severalen, Göteborg, IFK Göteborg in 26, Kangasalan is 27, Mora, Orion, uh, Nadia Volinska is 29, and uh, we have, as you see on the graphics, 34 teams in the finish now. Hisi Rasti is uh, 30. Hisi Rasti is 30, Igtisa, Lithuania is 31, Hemelin Sunistayat, Eksjö, and uh, NT Envi is team number um, team number 34. All right, it was a very exciting relay and uh, every athletes that have been here they have been very positive also about how it was in the forest <laughs> that it was changing between fast and technical that it yes, was yes. It, it, it has been a good challenge for them and they uh, have enjoyed the competition all of them. Yeah, I thought after the first leg uh, already quite big differences, but uh, as I said, I mean, the four kings have done their job also. Mm. And I think it was an interesting relay. Uh, here comes Mina Kalpi. Yes. Laden Sunistayat into place number 35. Let's check the time of Mina Kalpi on this last leg. If she is the fastest, she is actually. She has taken Laden Sunistayat from place number 70 to place number 35, and she is six seconds faster than Anna Margrethe Hauskin. 
Yeah, no I bass, mean, that's so. the place you can do there, full speed and try, and she succeeds, so that's nice for her. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like... So uh, they can work on the team. At least it says something about her her physical shape, yes, that, that she course. can actually do that yeah. time. That yeah, it's, yeah. it's Nice uh, to see her back. Yeah, it will be interesting to see later in the year uh, for the World Championships yeah. if she can, uh, can find her uh, shape just in time for that. She has done that before, so... Yes. So we will see. Lynx is also uh, finished, and um, I probably Maria should. Rantanen is coming. Yeah, it's Maria Rantanen <laughs> for uh, her team. So she has also a good time, I Jemsen guess. Jemsen <laughs> Retkivaitkot. Let's check her time too when we are still here. Yes, but she has probably s she has probably seen a lot to Minakopi because. She's uh, one and a half minutes slower on the leg, so she yes. went out just before Minakopi and she's in the finish just after, so maybe they have run part of this course together. Um, so I probably should ask Frederick more about this, but um, now having seen the women's relay, what can we expect from the men's relay? The first, at least second and third leg, it will be a little bit dark out there and it seems some places the visibility is lower and... Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's always, you have to orient your compass, you have to use, and uh, I think the night will still be a little demand, and mm. uh, yeah, perhaps it's not so clear sky anymore during night, so it will be a little bit darker, but but still, I, I think the four kings will make the differences, mm. and uh, the best will be there. Because it seems like it's possible, it will be possible surely also in the night here to run very, very fast. Yes, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that yeah. will uh, that will create a challenge when you go into the difficult part yeah, and you get the yeah. four kings and... Yeah. Um, yeah. And there are some green areas perhaps being the hills also and yeah. we saw one mistake from Yerla. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, <laughs> so, uh, and, and we've also seen from the all the course information that there is quite some more climb on the men's... Um, yeah courses so they yeah. will have some tougher um, tougher yeah. physical courses and uh, even some more technical areas which yeah. the women mostly just touched and the men will have definitely yeah. much more of that and uh, that will be very interesting the men's uh, relay starts at uh, 11 o'clock in the evening um, uh, finish uh, time it means 10 o'clock uh, in uh, central Europe Simone Nigli. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you back. Um, how was this for oh, you? It was beautiful. <laughs> it's really one of the most beautiful terrains in Finland I've run in. And uh, I had a smooth race also. It was uh, good technically. In the end, I had to, to fight quite a lot <laughs> because my legs weren't that uh, fresh. But uh, I'm very happy. Uh, how do you feel your own shape now compared to one year, two years ago? Do you feel the difference? Is it towards the end that you feel <laughs> the difference, or how do you feel it? Yeah, I, I feel the difference. So I have to fight uh, much more yeah. than uh, some years ago, but uh, still I have a, a, I have a good speed, and uh, if the technique is also good, so uh, I can do good orienteering. But of course, uh, it lacks a bit the last uh, gear, mm -hmm. so to fight against Hauskin. <laughs> but, it, but it's okay. They are all in a very good shape for the World Championship already, and I don't have to. No, you don't have to, but we see, I don't know if you have seen all the times from the from the last leg, but uh, your time is anyway 52.42. So we now actually have Mina is 52.13, which is the fastest. Okay, only some seconds. So it's <laughs> well. only some seconds behind Mina and Tuva Alexandersson. You are actually 10 seconds ahead of her. <laughs> and some, um, yeah, 25 seconds behind Hauskin. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm very happy that I can be in... So it still um, looks that the top speed women. is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but you were ahead of Hauskin actually in the beginning. Mm. You were almost one minute ahead and then... Yeah, I had a very good start. I, I don't know about uh, the Goffling, mm. if I had the shorter one, but mm. then it came very uh, quite a long leg and then there I struggled a little bit in the green area and uh, yeah, there Hauskin came and catched me, but um, 
yeah, it's, it's of course the, the second part was much tougher than mm. the first part and then uh, I lost a little bit. So T7 in place number nine, you started very well, you were first also, then in the first change I spoke to um, to uh, Lilian Forsgren here, so are you happy about ninth place or? Yeah, I think we can be happy, so, uh, so of course there is a little gap to the very best mm. ones, but and it was our tactic to be among the best on, mm. the, on the first leg, because if you are five, six minutes behind, it's very tough to come back in the competition. And of course, it was uh, hard for a second runner, <laughs> Louisa, yeah. to get out first. But both uh, Louisa and Andrea, Andrea did a good job, and yeah. I think it's a team for the future. So uh, perhaps it was the last time that I ran the last leg. Ah, Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next year you <laughs> have to do yeah another leg. <laughs> another leg. So yeah, but how is it now after you sort of finished the international career? Uh, do you enjoy it just as much now, or do you maybe enjoy it even more now? Is it less pressure or did you enjoy the pressure so much that it, <laughs> how is it compared yeah, to I, how it I was? Yeah, I think it's, I enjoy it on a, on a different way. Yeah. So, you know, it's uh, nice not to have this pressure on every race, of course, and just enjoy the terrain and the competition. But on the other hand, if you prepare very hard for a world championship and then you win a medal, mm. this feeling I will never have again. Yeah. And this was really special. But uh, yeah, I think if I, think back if there are a lot of nice experiences but now I also looking forward to to run only the nice orienteering mm -hmm. competitions <laughs> and uh, yeah enjoy it in a different way so, so how much do you train now well a I, week? Uh, I train daily but uh, not ah. that much and not that tough as before so uh, before it was twice a day and now it's uh, much more less and it's not every day is it running, it's also a bit fitness training yeah. and the most difference is that I don't do any interval training and that uh, is the reason that I don't have this speed yeah. for the last but few But you still meters. do quite a lot of competitions so you yeah, get some Yeah, that's true, so I, I come in good shape through the competitions. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. You're Simona, welcome. Simona, good to see you here and uh, I think we will see you in the relays for a couple of more years. Hope so, yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that was uh, Simone Nigli. I have lost count of the number of World Championship medals, uh, but it's a lot. And uh, yeah, she was very happy and uh, one of the best Finnish terrains she has ever run in. Oh, nice she said. Yes, And she yeah. has been running in quite a lot of Finnish terrains, yeah. I think. So yeah, yeah. she's been running also for for a Finnish club previously also, so she has been here quite a lot and there's been world championships here too, so she knows what she's talking about. Yeah. Okay, we have 53, 54 teams um, in the finish. And here comes team number 55 and this is uh, Konrud from Drammen and uh, Norway into the finish. Fifty-six teams and then we uh, second team as well. And uh, this is uh, yes, it was uh, somebody I recognize, but there is no oh, team <laughs> coming up. <laughs> uh, she's not coming up, so maybe they no. are disqualified on an earlier leg. I don't know. I have to wait and see. It was interesting, <laughs> Natalia Vinogradova. <laughs> Told, I don't know if you heard, but no. she told me when she came into the last part here, she was very disappointed because she saw the number four okay. on the no. uh, on the top of the run because yeah. there's normally the place. Yes, but exactly. it was she saw the number of the leg. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> it was leg so number she was four. tired. <laughs> so she must have been very tired because she yeah. thought, oh no, I'm only no. number four. And then the girls told her that, oh, you were yeah, number two. Yeah, yeah. So nice surprise then. <laughs>
So uh, we will um, finish up now here in the studio. The, the feed with the runners coming into the finish will continue to move during the evening here. So all of you watching, waiting for your team to finish, you can just follow the feed. It will be without uh, commentary. Um, thank you a lot, Ronnie, for joining me here. It was thank very, you. very useful. And uh, Frederick can also come in here and just Sit down because uh, he will be back for the men's relay in the evening, of course. And don't forget the men's relay. We will start at uh, 10 minutes to 11 finish time. It means 10 minutes before 10 Central European time. So in Norway and Sweden, it will mean 21.50 in the evening. We will start with uh, the men's relay and we will keep going all through the night. So join us again then. Thank you very much for following the Venla Relay and uh, we are back with Jukola in the evening.
Sinne voisi ehkä mennä silleen, että meillä on se tuota polkuu täält näin, jonka kuvaat. Ja sit tuota...
Ruoat olevat oikealla kallioilla, oletkin väärällä, niin se tosi hyvä tietää, missä missä siinä. Joo. Niitä voi joko kiertää tolle tai sitten vaan mennä tuot läpi. Nyt tiheket on kuulemma aika ihmisten.
siitä pystyy hyvin konkreettisesti näkemään tämän lähdön järjestelyn ja vaihdon ja, ja viimeisen rastin ja näin poispäin, niin se helpottaa tätä. Ja sitten myös tuo, että tahtojen jakaminen aloitetaan kuulutuksen ohjeiden mukaan ja siinä on sitten tärkeää varmistaa, että saa varmasti kartan jakajalta se oman numero kartan. Ja kartta on pidettävä näkyvillä valtalon edessä lähtölaukaukseen asti ja karttaa ei saa avata. Lähtöhän sitten myös videoidaan. Nämä on ihan selkeitä ohjeita ja siellä on monta kilometriä aikaa sitten tuolla äh, Jukolan äh, ensimmäisen osuuden aikana katsella niitä reittejä, että hoidetaan tämä kunnolla. Demoista se meni hienosti. Jos siihen nyt jonkun aivan tämmöisen niin kuin, äh, sanotaan nyt virallisen ohjekirjan ulkopuolella olevan neuvon saa tässä antaa, niin kehottaisin kyllä merkittelemään tuo nimittäin kohtalaisen pitkä tuo lähtösuora. Ja toinen asia on se, että ei kannata kaatua, että kannattaa pysyä pystyssä. Mutta tuossa nyt ei ole mitään oksaa ja juurahivoa, eli tuo on tuollainen selvä asfaltti, että luulisi, että siinä kohtalaisen hyvin miehet pysyvät pystyssä. Kyllä näin, mutta tietenkin kovaa lähdetään ja paineet on kovat, tätä on odotettu pitkät, pitkät talvet, kevät, kaikki ne kovat harjoitukset. Harjoitukset maaliskuussa, marraskuussa myös tuntuu, että ei tästä tule mitään. Joka paikkaan sattuu, ei kuulje, kaverit menee kovempaa. Niin sieltä se on se valopiirto sitten tullut kuitenkin kevään myötä kesän lämmön. Ja nyt on hetki, jolloin on aika iskeä, iskeä kaikki ne treenatut tunnit kuntosalilla, metsissä, suojissa, ties missä. Kaikki ne treenatut hetket on hieno päräyttää nyt juuri nyt juuri käyntiin. Kyllä, ja niin kuin nähdään, aurinko vaan siellä sitkeästi painuu mailleen ja hän alkaa hiipiä tähän Jukolakylän ympäristöön. Täällä kyllä aivan lailla tunnelma rupeaa tihentymään ja ykkösketjun kuuluttajienikin rupeaa hiipimään tänne kuuluttamoon. Mutta tosiaan nyt on vielä 45 minuuttia aikaa siihen, että tuo Forksin emit kirjautumiseen avataan ja siitä se tämä sitten lähtee tulemaan työtä tänne. Niin ja hyvät ystävät, toki tässä tapahtuu vielä tuolla ohjelman lavallakin. Eli kello 21.45, jos tuo käsiohjelman aikataulu pitää paikkansa ohjelman lavalla. Kolme varttia soittamassa Sanitize Quick Band. Solisteina Ani Kivelä ja Roosa Simoni, jos en tiedä, että saa sitten sitä penkiä pikkusen mukaan tuonne OK. Sitten vaikka siihen pöyristyy. Juuri näin. Niin kuin Jukolassa aina on tapana, niin se on oikeastaan aika veikeitä, kun ajattelee, että lähtöön on tosiaan tällä hetkellä aikaa pikkusen vajaa tuntia kolme varttia. Että kyllä tuossa suunnistustoukkuja vaille kävelee jo jengi.